Welcome to Magic the Flavoring, the Magic the Gathering podcast, where we talk about all things magic, flavor, design, and lore. I'm your host, Andy Mann. Hello, this is Nathan Cancel. Whenever we have a break between episodes, I always worry that I'm going to launch into that intro and so and go, welcome to Magic the Gathering, the Magic the Gathering, gathering, gathering. Like, do you know what? I completely missed the flavoring Wait, section. welcome to Flavor the Gathering. Welcome to Flavor the Gathering. Um, I have a cold. I'm owning it now. We've done 120 odd episodes, and I've definitely had colds before, as have you. And I always try and like hide the sniffs My and hide the coughs. Fucked, man. Um, day. <laughs> yeah, you are qu- you're quite a bungy person. Oh, yeah. um, when I get colds, they tend to become quite pronounced. Um, I'm not trying to like humble brag having a cold, but so I'm just saying that now for anyone <laughs> listening, I will try and cut out the coughs. I coughed there, and if I've cut it just out, proving it. Well, no, no, I'm not. I'm going to cut that one out. But like, if I can't cut it out, or you hear a sniff or whatever else, I'm sorry. Enjoy all the free content. I, I don't know why I got aggressive again. <laughs> Every, most episodes start with us making an excuse about something. Like complaining about, saying, about, hey, there's going to be some sound in the back. Because I was going to start the episode by saying, I've got my window open because I live in a basement and I, and I got black mold a, a month ago and I realised it's because I don't ventilate my, my rooms. You got black mold? I did. That's and you've I've invited me around to record a podcast? I've got, I've got rid of all of it. It's fine. It's been gone for a while. Um, so the window's open <laughs> and it's raining. Um, so there might be some pitter patter of rain. But I like to think of that as like ambiance. You know? well, do you remember a few like a few episodes ago when there was like horrendous roadworks outside? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we we looked, powered through. We looked at each other in your doorway and we just went, "Oh fuck it." Whereas like maybe in episode twenty, we would have been like, "Well, we'll have to reschedule. Yeah, we'll have to do a different day." <laughs> uh, really, dear listener, the down quality or like the kind of you know the the trajectory downwards of quality in these podcasts is just measured by time. So thank you for sticking with us, and yeah. uh, you're having a worse experience than those who gave up ten, ten episodes in. You also show up once a month to listen to us moan for the first ten minutes, which is great. Thanks. Yeah. Appreciate that. <laughs> Commander Masters is here. It is. But hang it on is. a minute. We didn't do Lord of the Rings. We didn't. Or what was another one we didn't do? No, I think that was, that was it right for now, I think. We've only missed one set. Because we did the... Oh, well, we didn't talk about Aftermath in the end either, in any well, respect. Well, no. Well, didn't even might... talk about the story. I feel, like we, I feel like we come back to Aftermath when we see the after effects of it. Because we until we go to a few different planes where we've seen kind of like what the de-sparking kind of means. and like Because where we left the story off, it was actually kind of a bit flat. It was only two episodes. It was the yeah. Johnny Nahiri episode. And then off the top of my head, I can't even remember the other episode. Um, so clearly it wasn't that prevalent. But there was only two of them that kind yeah. of gave this like... Finish. Oh, it's the Chandra Nissa episode, which actually is actually a really good um, bit of writing. I did actually enjoy that, but it was very much a an epilogue. It wasn't a new a new book, you know, as it yeah, were, yeah, another yeah. act. It was just like the little epilogue at the end. So when we see the what what the effects of that, when we come back to them, yeah, then we can look at that and then also where it led to. Because sometimes there's no point going, hey, they left all these things in the air, and we're like, yeah, cool. But also at the same time, there's going to be another product in a month because that's what the, the fucking game plan is at the moment. Yeah. So you'll be distracted in a week's time anyway. Maybe wait to, criti- <laughs> maybe wait to criticize it until you see what the effects of it that's are. That's fair. I mean, you know, yeah. I think we've, we've made it very clear for people who have uh, uh, listened. Oh, God. Wow, that knocked right into the arm as well. That hasn't happened, happened no, in a while. Sorry, that's right. Again. Oh, this, no, no quality control anymore. So like, nope. um, <laughs> <laughs> um, We've definitely lent into the we're just going to do the products that we, we're keen to talk, talk about. Yeah. And the rest of it is kind of, you know, cherry picking. So there we go. I think there is a, a thing to be said that Lord of the Rings would have been much easier for us to digest than, say, when we did the D&D breakdowns. Yeah. Because that's some, that's law that we can actually get into. I know that I, I've read the books. I, I take it you've read the books or part of Of them. Lord of the Rings? Yeah. Yes, I'm a massive. Yeah, yeah, no, but, yeah, but there are some people that are really big fan, and then there are some that get halfway through the two towers and they go, you know what? Fuck That's this. not. I'm not throwing shade at people <laughs> who know? haven't read the book because the books are dense. Well, you they know? are. It's, when, it's when you get like 17 chapters in, you're like, they haven't really left the shire. Yet. I, I haven't. <laughs> I, I'm not. That's not shade at people who haven't read the books. I'm just saying, again, I, like I'm a, I'm a tattooed J.R.R. Yeah, Tolkien of fan. Course. And what I mean is, that it's interesting. We didn't skip it because it's not relevant. It's almost like we skipped it just because there's too much content and we're already onto the next thing, and it's kind of. It's easier for us to not have to talk about everything. Like we've said in the past of where we found it kind of a bit tiring and not, I don't know, like it felt a bit rinsing to have to keep up with everything that was going on. Like we stopped doing every secret lair because they were doing like 16 a month at one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, hyperbole aside. that We could have actually done a really long, good episode about the Lord of the Rings. Well, we but... were always planning to do it with uh, Chris and Gregory. But, yeah. yeah, and because it's also a set that I actually think they did a really, really good job on. I think art style, mechanics, all that kind of stuff was actually really good. However time there's already new stuff to talk about it's actually a little bit easier than having a two hour long episode breaking down the entire set and yeah, getting into yeah, the nitty gritty yeah. of it maybe it's something we'll come back to later 
who knows? But there's new shit to talk there about. Is. So let's just get on with the new shit. Let's go with the new easier shit. Easier to digest and, and and talk about. Plus, we are kind of more commandery players anyway. Yeah, let's go. I mean, the so commander. This, this is, is this relevant is a good set. to us. This is a good set. More. Yeah, exactly. Outside of the price and like I don't know, uh, draftability. Hey, sixty pounds for a draft. Hey, who yeah. wants to do that? Again, this is something else I'm not buying product for, which is a shame. I'll buy. I'll, I'm going from buying one bundle each set to buying one booster pack each yeah. set. But there we go. Hopefully, enough whales open up enough product that the, the single price go down oh I think bit. the singles price is going to go down I really, need, I really need a copy of Zatalpa I'm so glad they put it in the set I really need a copy of Zatalpa <laughs> <laughs> just go along that, took, that took me a half a second then to be like which, dra- which dragon which dinosaur is that is that the oh, oh, oh it's no the it's big that flappy one. boy that's in fucking everything I mean he was an absolute all star in my Catherall deck look the thing is about the thing, the problem with some of these uh, we're, 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 <laughs> the we're, problem with the Talpa <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get into like the flavour bits so, but, like, in terms of like their choices of flappy boys we're, if, we're, if we're talking flappy boys let's talk about Drake Drake man Talrand as well that, yeah these cards oh are shit expensive. Talrand gets a special treatment right. in the set you know I'm annoyed that the Talpa didn't get a squaw face in profile to be fair but um, it's funny that some of the cards that people really really argue about they make for a good limited format because yes, the Tower Brand Limited is that eight mana like late game bomb that no one can answer, and Tower Brand is a really good build around. Problem is, it's sixty fucking pounds to draft this set, so yeah. stop putting shitty rares in packs that people aren't drafting and opening for opening and selling purposes. Yeah, you douchebags. Anyway, please give us a preview card. I'm desperate. <laughs> um... <laughs> I'll do anything. Uh, <laughs> give us a Talpa. We'll, ma- we'll somehow make it interesting. There are so many cards we can make interesting. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um. Aside from the pricing, uh-huh. this set is obviously rad. It's yeah. obviously rad because yeah. they've done they've done the good thing. They've done the good thing, which Commander Legends did, which they've given us new interesting cards where they can. They've given us reprints of old cards which need reprints, and they've done the good showcase treatment, like as in practice. Which, if we're talking about Tarand, for example, or if we're talking about you know super expensive cards, they've all got an alternate treatment that you can dig into. There are also cards in the main line set. That have new art, new flavor text, mm. uh, but aren't necessarily the showcasey or the. I guess I was about to say like promo. Is that the right way to describe uh, these like anymore? Variant, variant. Thank you. Variants. They're not exactly variants. They're just this is what the art is in this set. Yeah. And uh, we are going to talk about which we don't always do. Uh, we are going to talk about the commander decks. Yeah. Well, in those are the passing. only. Those are the only new cards per se, because the otherwise the command master set is a reprint only set. So the only new cards are from the commander yes. decks. Yes. Yeah. 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 Exactly. So, so we're going to talk about some of those because there's some interesting flavor yeah. digging down of there. And this is a flavor podcast. So tell you what, we've all had a whinge. None of us can afford it. We're all going to be poor. Uh, Look let's at the just three move pictures on. Pictures and words and see, and, yeah. and, and enjoy the the multiverse that we exist in. Yeah. So let's crack on. Uh-huh. So, I we didn't actually uh, talk about how we're going to structure this episode. Nope. Do we talk about some of the new art for just the kind of general cards in the set, and then move on to the promos, or what do you want to do? So I have two sections. I've got flavor nebulously with some stuff underneath it, and then I've got art nebulously with a bunch of stuff underneath it. So I'd say let's start with artwork because I think it's the, one of the main things I think that we will end up talking about falls under that side of things All right. and then we can look at flavour highlights specifically throughout the cards and then after I guess at the end of that we'll look at the commander cards because they're both new uh, yeah, so let's, let's do commander the, cards last so let's look at the new flavour and the new art of the set main set and then let's do the commander after yeah I agree sweet alright sounds like you got a plan I do off your pop uh, profile shots all right, the profile shots. Yeah, oh, we're diving, we're diving <laughs> we're going, straight into that. We're going straight then. into that because okay. this, I think, is one of those things where this was the more one of the more controversial. Um, I think it's quite. I think it's. Th- th- I mean, the elephant in the room. Are they too simple? Is it a bit like uh, some of the color choices in the background? Because so to, to to explain what these are, like mo- some of the legends um, have essentially like almost like mug shots. You know, when you get like photograph when you get arrested in America, you get like mug shots front and front and side, and these are, like the side side view shots. And for the most part, it's, 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 it's their face taking up a relative amount of the space, and then the back of it is just a single colour. Mm-hmm. The entire block background. All different artists. Yep, all, dif- all different artists. Not one person doing all of them, which I think is a, a smart decision. Yep. They all have a similar kind of aesthetic of being a little bit more on the c- cartoony side. They're all pop art style. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I think they have, you know, I don't think this is a, a hot take, but varying degrees of success. I think some are a bit shit, and I think some are pretty decent. Oh my god, we're jumping in straight. We very rarely call out artwork. I've got the feeling you're going to be calling out some artwork in this. No, not part. anything. There are some that I think just will be, uh, like, in particular, just fall a little flat. You just said some of them are shit. Bit, bit shit? Bit shit. I think. Well, so the, the problem I think, and the main point is that, is having a blank background right for these cards? Okay. Because. 
focusing purely just on their faces for some of them I think is fine but for, some, for others I'm like yeah but you've not given them an environment that they're around it just okay. kind of feels a little bit peculiar mate it's, it's kind of like one of those I don't know especially after because I'm looking at a play map now of the uh, the holofoil of um, Aftermath and it's obviously the one where it's kind of like the punk rocky kind of poster kind of thing of all the different planeswalkers where their sparks desparked yeah and it kind of feels a little bit like this of where it's like a uh, what's it called a rogues gallery as it were uh, yeah and I think it's really cool because some of them you get to a really close up of their face for someone like say for example Urza where on his late, on the first printing, Lord High Artificer, you don't really get to see him. He's kind of in the distance and the background with all these mechs behind him. You don't really get to have like, hey, there's a new Urza card. But this, you've got him like front, well, front and center facing to the to the left. Um, also, guess side note, this is great for the decks that like ladies looking left. Oh sure, yeah, yeah, got yeah, a yeah. bunch of bunch of them now because they are all looking left. I think for some of them it's kind of cool, and, it's, and I think it was good. And I think for some of them it's like, oh, okay, maybe you've not you've not presented them in the you know you've not given them the best glow, gl- glam up glow up. Um, what were your what were your highlights and lowlights of them? What do, what's your opinion, Andy? I love them. Yeah, I unequivocally them. love them. Every, every one of them. Oh god, yes. every one of them. Yeah, I'm gonna be that guy. I think. Different. Look, we get so many uh, promos and variants of all different kinds of cards, and they've really focused in on in, in recent sets of doing variants that are attuned to the plane of wherever it is or the setting. So, like you know, Neon Kamigawa Dynasty, Japan Land mm. got Neon. Dynasty Japan land kind of things, you know what I mean? Or like the Origami Island thing. Yeah, yeah and like, like I mean, and you know, I think the best lands that we've had ever. Eldrain's going to be getting you know fancy fairy tale Europe land like variants and all this kind of thing. And you mm. know, I'm being I'm being silly, but like you know, they always try and tailor it. Even the brand new Ravnica showcase border, which they did specifically oh, to yeah, kind the of bring really back, building bits around the is outside. you know about the buildings, about yeah. the sort of the Prague the Prague aesthetic and all that kind of stuff. So what? Is this is Commander Masters? This isn't based anywhere. It's not Shandala or any of that kind of nonsense like with core sets. So what are you going to do? You're going to highlight and focus in on the legends that make up mm. the game of Commander because Commander is about legends. True, because I guess if you've got them sat in your command zone, it's much easier to grok who they are if it's just their face. Yeah, uh-huh. you know, it's not like oh yeah, I can see them in the artwork kind of nestled in the back there. But it's like no, this is an Azusa deck. Or, you know, this is a Selvana you can, you deck. Can also, you could match them with sleeves really well. Yeah, I guess that. Yeah, it's true. Because I guess... Uh, so one of the interesting ones, the more interesting ones, the one that kind of, I think, uh, pushes a little bit, is the Sel- specifically Selvana, because it's a green card with a fluorescent... Not quite fluorescent, but, like, ba- bubblegum pink background. Yeah. And I think they do that because her face has, like, an element of, the, of pink to it, and it does match fine. And as you're scrolling through, it doesn't look weird per se, but it's a green card that, that, that's noticeably not very green. Which they tend not to do. It's one thing I think one of the fallacies of Magic is for years and years and years they made sure that mountains are always red. Oh, sure, yeah. Mountains can be any colour. Like, I've got an old school um, mountain. I think it's one from Tempest or something. It's really, really old. And it's, like, mostly black in the artwork. Yeah. And I think that's really cool because it stands out a little bit more because you're so used to just, just being a wishy-washy kind of redness kind of sat down in your, in your mana base area. Um, I don't mean, I feel like there are, there are some that are definitely also interesting from a... Of a, I didn't expect to get a close up of that person's face. Like well, me- not even person on some of them. Some of them are well, yeah. non humanoid. So, like um, Maelstrom Wonder, for example. Some that I didn't expect to get, Kakar. Not- With a very, like, almost. I mean, we're sort of saying it's like a cartoon pop art style. It's it's a very realistic. That's uh, this, is like, this is like the anthropology, <laughs> whatever, whatever. What is it? The ornithology. Ornithology uh, secret lair. Yeah, yeah, this is almost like that kind of thing. Um, and I'm not gonna lie, I'm not changing. I'm not changing. My, <laughs> I'm not changing my printing to this one. It but you get things weird. like um, Shire Shizo's caretaker, which is like a, a Kami spirit that's all zombified and kind of alieny. And that, or if you look at the fucking Kozilek, Kozilek and Ulamog, Do you know what I mean? Crimson Shin vibes from uh, Ulamog is, is is the trend. <laughs> was the trend? Um, my one. Gisela, Blade of Gold Knight? Holy shit, my yeah, heart. Yeah, Gisela's very, very cool. Oh my god, so Alex uh, Dos Diaz, who does her artwork, also did the um, Universal Legends, or Multiversal Legends version of Aurelia. Oh, which yeah, is yeah, also yeah. really good. Again, as you said, with the border with the tri- with the the border treatment, um, which is also a massive glove. She is great. She's only done about, I think, four cards. Um, and it's a very similar kind of style to uh, Beckett. That we're getting this kind sure. of like cartoon, this almost flat kind of style, which I really, really enjoy. I think after so many years of moving to like digital art, it's quite nice to get things that are a little bit different. And these are definitely different. I think Merrin, Merrin super look at looking super sexy. <laughs> Mer- Merrin's your teenage goth girlfriend. <laughs> uh huh. Tatiova looks like poison ivy. Holy shit, she's beautiful. Um, and then you've got Zakama, herp derp and herp again. <laughs> yeah, Zakama. 
is an interesting one. Cause... Side by side with the Ur Dragon, it's just it looks it looks it looks like here's my dad. This is what my daddy drew, and then this is what. This is but what I I don't think there's is, I don't think that's the fault of the artist. You no. know what I think that's the fault of. You know, there's that meme of the Dungeons and Dragons triple headed. Oh, dragon. it is with the derpy one. Oh, it's so true. Whereas the two yeah, yeah, scary yeah. ones looking at the the derp one. Yeah, oh, I'm not going to have to look at a Gleok the same way ever again. Oh, it is very gliocky. It's very gliocky. I've only killed one gliocky. It terrified me. Yeah, same. I mean, actually, it's kind of interesting. I got to the point segue. I got from I went from never touch them, and not not ever going close to absolutely dominating and owning a flame one, and being like, oh, maybe I do just go and try and take a, take on a king one. Don't let it get into the final stages, guys. Just just own it, own it in bullet time. Do not let it flap up. Well, you know that's not even the most powerful version of a gliocky. What the king one? Yeah. Okay. Well, what's in the depths? Oh, I don't want to know. Shh. I don't know. I don't know. What happens to things in the depths? Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Whatever. Cool. Talking about Zelda now, by the way. Right. Um, anyway, back to Magic <laughs> the Gathering. Um, so, I think the non-humanoid ones are more interesting. Cool. Well, I think I think also it's 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 nice of wizards to acknowledge the fact that not everything is humanoid. Yeah. Um, although there is one technical humanoid character in these profiles that I'm actually really happy they gave this artwork to, even though the fact I despise this card and everything and its entire existence. Right, let me have a little look through all of them and see which one and see okay. if I can guess which one it is. It's well documented. I fucking hate this card and everything it represents. Oh, God. Oh, yeah, Morophon. Mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, man. Oh, Morophon's weird. Like, I, I, it's like uncanny valley of like the little f- human face in between the other faces. I kind of don't hate it, but it's like, all I have in my notes is... Uh, what the fuck Morophon? Well, it's three <laughs> different human faces, as in, like, it's not just, like, you know, vaguely similar. They're very different human faces merging into each other with animalistic tendencies. And it's not it's ob- it's not different from the original conception of the original Morophon card. It's mm. just the original Morophon card was like someone was trying to do, like, a photorealistic version of what this thing could be, mm. which it's just, it was horrible and weird and ugly. I yeah. mean, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't like calling out artworks either. I think that Morophon art is ugly. Um... But it's like Whereas an, this it's one, like an MC Escher fucking painting. Yeah, this one's much better. I think yeah. it's a much more it's better representation for what a card happens? and a tribe, which I think I'd happily boot out of Magic. Or what happens when you accidentally become your uh, furry fetish? Um, horrible things. Apparently, you turn to pink goo. Uh, I was like, birds for scale are still there, which is kind of funny. Just kind of funny. I don't know. Yeah, I think I think the thing I like about them, I think I, I think yeah, the thing I like about them is how bold and how much they stand out, like compared to a typical Magic the Gathering card, which is something I'm a massive advocate for. The more you can diversify what Magic the Gathering playing cards can look like, the I'm the more I'm for it. Um, I think that there are just a, a few of them. I might like, just it's just a dude looking, it's just a dude or a lass looking left, and you haven't even got a cool background. So, but I think I I go to go back to my earlier point and not to go around in circles because we've got a lot to talk about, but I think there are a lot of commander cards, a lot of legendaries, which you can argue the artwork is a lot, is a bit busy, especially if you're really into the character of X, Y, and Z. Sure. So this being a really clean representation yeah. of them. No bells, is... no whistles. Yeah. Just their face. It's cool. Yeah, cool. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, whoever got Kozilek to sit around long enough to do their uh, profile shot as well, kudos to you. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just the the sort of radioactive, like imprinted memory of after, mm. like before they destroy a plane. This <laughs> is like oh, imprinted in their brain. about it, yeah. Eldrazi definitely kind of have a radioactive kind of feeling. Yeah, because the, the aura that's around like Void Winner and Ulamog. Well, who's the who's the one that calcifies everything? Ulamog. That's Ulamog. Yeah, yeah he I definitely. I guess it quite literally yeah, is. Yeah. almost like radiation. I hadn't even thought about it from that point of view. God, it makes them way more scary. Blah. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Uh, Richard K. Ferguson is back. Richard Kane Ferguson's been well, did, doing a I, lot I, for Magic did recently. I, did I, was I wrong in thinking that he'd retired from the game? No, I just don't think they had him back for a while, and now he's just back with a vengeance. Yeah, and he loves doing alternate art for white cards, doesn't he? Because he's done three of them in this, and I think he's got another couple as well, with, uh, spe- peppered through. Because he did the Dark Mutation, Grand Abolisher, Pure Steel Paladin... Um, and then I think he did one other for another colour that I can't find right now. Obviously. What I love about Richard Kane Ferguson... Oh, fact or fiction. That was it, yeah. Is that he has... He's got a really weird niche, and that niche is sort of gothic, quasi-religious, grim dark yeah. knights. And it's like fuzzy, gritty... It's almost like dirty artwork. But I just love the fact that, obviously, Grand Abolisher, as a card, is meant to be... Is like... got sort of a very sort of um, cleric sort of idea, or like yeah. paladin sort of thing. Whereas this is something out of fucking Dark Souls. But it's still the same. Like, it hasn't... He hasn't done which some... And there's nothing wrong with this when they reimagine it completely, but he's definitely gone like, oh no, I'm doing big dude in armour with a... Well, mm. you know, not necessarily a dude, so I'll roll that one back. But like, you know, big person in armour with, you know, sort of quasi-religious overtones, but this is just in my own art style. I was like, yeah, fucking dig it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, again, that kind of textured quality, I think, is really, really, really cool. Very cool. Um, 
Ron Spears, Path to Exile. Oh my god. Yeah, very cool. Call it artwork. I think he's, he did another one as well. And there's spectator seating as well. Mm. The random spectator seating. Really bright, really colourful. The fact they reimagined all of the um, Kylum lands to be part of Strixhaven. Because if you think about it, like... Essentially, Kylum could just be reduced down to what was that game called again? Magic Ball, Dodge Spell, Wiz- Wizard Bash. Wizard, yeah, exactly. I don't yeah. know. Fucking... Magic Rugby. Yeah, exactly. Whatever the fuck they played with, I I know we we should know this, but like whatever they did with the mascots, mascot ball time. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's I don't know. The, where we've stadium. had multiple conversations of like, why is it a physical sport? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, either way, they've got stadiums there, so that was that was Kylum's entire thing. They're just a stadium with a bunch of, and then they okay, hey, let's give these lands to give the planes some diversity. And they go cool. Let's then put all of those diverse lands on a different plane instead yeah, to like, take away strict that. sports day, and it makes it fits better. It makes it fit better. And it I gives think it's each, fine. Yeah, yeah, it gives each of their prime students another another bit of uh, flavor text as well because each of them are referring to their individual you know training grounds as it were. I mean, I know training grounds is quite literally one of them but spectator seats is fantastic <laughs> Ron, there are certain artists that i'm really glad to get full art treatments because i feel like it the, the boldness of their art or the or the evocativeness of their art it really kind of shines through i think um ron spencer is another one disrupt the quorum like yeah, food yeah, fight. yeah. like it oh it's good to have another disrupt the quorum card yes exactly yeah there's a few cards and we are kind of like jumping about a little bit here but there are yeah, a lot there are a fair few cards in the set that were desperately in need of having just another version of them in there I think like Grave Packs was it was great to get two different versions of it to kind of expand on that flavor aspect for it because it's a card that you don't really want to have to spend out on the on the old versions and all of the old versions are a bit old school black magic they're very, cards. They're very nineteen nineties exactly, magic cards. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. So it's nice to get some uh, some old school artists getting some big ass artwork. Like when, who was it that did the uh, Chaos Warp, the box top of Chaos Warp? Oh, one moment. Let me just quickly check. I don't know, man. So then it might have always been Ron Spencer. Chaos War. There's a similar idea of where if you do a really evocative... Oh, no, Phil Foglio. Of course, of course oh, it is. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah of course yeah, yeah. it is. But here again, a really, really interesting, unusual art style that gets taken advantage of even more by the fact it has the entire card to play with instead of just, you know, the little square box that it normally gets. A, a, uh, a full art treatment promo that I'm really impressed with is Flawless Maneuver, which mm. is uh, now has Taser Karlov on it because it's not... It's... It, it is re- it's fully it's doing the thing which I said Richard Kane Ferguson wasn't doing. Richard Kane Ferguson was like reimagining the remit that was there in his own style. This is taking a card with a name and an effect and completely reimagining how that works. So obviously the the original flawless remo- uh, maneuver was from Ikoria yeah. and it was the copper coats doing a cool thing. Yeah, it was so like, like a, 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 an army fucking. It was like a militaristic sort of maneuver. That's it, yeah, a military yeah. Maneuver, Whereas exactly. this is Taser Karlov using a bit of her law magic to deflect a, a pyroblast. And then the mm. uh, the flavor text is I've survived a century's worth of assassination attempts, but this might be the most pathetic of them all. And it's got like real counter spell vibes. Yeah, That's, it it feels like a blue spell for sure. It's got that 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 indignance uh, that that blue spells usually have. It's like oh nice try, try again kind of feel. Which I think is cool because if you're playing like a spell slinger deck, I don't know, man. This is always just back. I mean, it's Command Masters obviously, but we're always bringing this back to like how they play on the on the board, right? If you're playing a Jeskai spell slinger deck or something similar. You would want this flawless maneuver over the other one, right? Just for like the yes. kind of flavor. Whereas, for for example, if you're playing like um, a Mardu deck, or yeah, something. exactly. You would yeah. absolutely want the other one. Yeah, exactly. It gives you an option to kind of tailor a card that is very powerful. I'm glad they've reprinted them in here anyway because they're kind of cards that most commander decks want. Any card that says commander on it usually is is, is going to be highly sought after because it's going to be a bit pushed. Um, I think across the board, all of them are really good. Coming to the um, deflecting SWAT. Where it's uh, just um, Corval just dashing away, dashing away the spell, which oh, is yeah. really really cool. Um, or oh, who is it that did the artwork for that one? God, far too many tabs open again. <laughs> it always fucking happens. Deadly Rollick gets uh, gets a Judith artwork, which I think really cool. Yeah, very cool. Um, where are you slapping away, slappy, slappy, slappy man? Uh, Greg Staples does deflecting swap. I also like the fact that. Um, Corval's like leaning on the text box, like he's got his hand kind of yeah. draped nonchalantly over the uh, over the type line, which I think is really really cool. I think in similar vein, Balefire Dragons, one of the better like it's so the, the the artwork's behind the text but above the the text box, so it's almost like created it creates that depth between the right the, the text box and the and the text, which I think is quite cool. Um, it obviously helps that um, dragons on um, Innistrad have see through wings anyway, like with Moon Silver. Dragon, and then we've oh, got they've got very dragon. thin wings, yeah, like yeah. membraney almost. Yeah, it's and very it kind membrane-y. of, and it plays into that effect with the fact that the text box as well is kind of semi-transparent. The dragon itself is semi-transparent. It's very, very cool. Um, yeah, I think there's, I think again, full art treatment, man. That's 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 so cool. I have a flavor fail 
for oh. or like a, a flavor like oh why'd you do that <laughs> I don't know why I've qualified it like that uh, the the promo command tower which uh, has art by Donato Giancola nothing against the artwork per se I find command towers in general I don't know they haven't they all they're all ugh. I have a love hate relationship with almost every command tower art because I think individually they're all relatively cool, mm. but at the same time they're all just the same thing. Yeah, I, I felt I felt specifically disappointed with both the green because I bought both the of the commander what are they spellbooks they weren't called spellbooks what were they called you had the Liliana one and then you had the Gideon one yeah those those are spellbooks but yeah, we're but talking, then, about yeah, the talking about the commander, commander collections one. commander collections that's it so both of them the command tower in them were a little bit naff they were both very very dark they didn't offer anything particularly new which is interesting because this one is really bright really shiny it's, it's got, got a rainbow got rainbows on it where, where is this even from I mean we say the, the flavour text is Callist the Wanderer right so which is from Eldraine okay oh yeah and I now see that's the my oh, favourite the wilds of it yeah because it's those big flowing uh, again we, we complained about this during an, our, our plane chase episode with all of the weird windy, rooty kind of stuff in Old Rain, but it has now allowed us to go, oh, well, we know where that is because th- th- those roots only really happen. Yeah. That, that, that woodwork only really happens on Eldrain. So, okay, maybe so, take it back from a few episodes. Okay? This isn't maybe a flavour fail directed at this command tower, maybe I'm being unfair, but I'm going to flag it now because I don't think I've ever flagged it before. Callus the Wanderer, which the flavour text is attributed to, mm. is a character from Eldrain because he's on Spectre's Shriek and Signpost Scarecrow. Okay. That's a set that came out after... War of the Spark, yeah, which is when another character was introduced. Oh yeah, called the, the Wanderer. Wanderer. It do you reckon Corlys the Wanderer is the name given to him by the people of Eldraine? I just think it was poor copywriting on the part of True. Wizards of the Coast. True, <laughs> that's terrible. That's like going, oh yeah, Danny the Mind Sculptor. What? Oh, true. Oh, wait, wait, they, they've literally had this happen recently. Oh, I, need, I need to do some backtracking for this because they've done this exactly very recently of where they had the exact same title and they just added another word in front of it. So it'd be like instead of being like. This is this person, the distributor, and then it was this person, the ghost distributor. Uh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. But you've just you've, you've already used that. This I mean, I guess you can have more than one. There's a baker in every town, right? So there might be I'm a wanderer. I'm not saying in every the plane. wanderer has a moratorium on the word, on the phrase the wanderer. I'm saying in the meta world of Magic: The Gathering, calling one of your signpost characters the wanderer, and then having in the same set afterwards another character called Danny the Wanderer is maybe a bit confusing. Fair. I mean, I also think that. Most people won't have bit paid attention to the flavour text enough as much as we have, and you didn't notice until three or th- three or four years later. Don't make me <laughs> the fucking the one at fault here. Because I'm just saying, like you know, you didn't notice it at the time, so clearly it wasn't that egregious an error. I'm. It's not my fault. You can't look back on it now. And also, wait. So you're complaining? Is it because the flavour text from the set's back then? I'm saying the entire character. Oh, is a fail. Okay. I feel like in the world of Magic the Gathering, if anything, now with Omen Pass, there are more wanderers than ever. I... In fact, she doesn't even wander anymore. She is the unwandering. All I'm saying is, is that even if this was the first flavour text with Call Us the Wanderer on it, hmm. I'd be pissed off now. But, but there is no, there's no other wanderer anymore. They still wander about... No, they don't. What's their name? We're not allowed to know. That's a that's that's a flavor. Is this a, a fucking fl- never ending story? Flavor canon. You're not allowed to know their name, but they're no longer the wanderer. If they gave if they gave her a card, then it wouldn't be the wanderer anymore. It would be you know, the the emperor. Nope. <laughs> Great. Good. Productive. I also think it's kind of funny. To go. I'm not. I, I don't know. It's one of those favor texts as well. It's like I'm not sure who's in charge around here, but I'm pretty sure I know where to find out. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's like well, yeah. I've got a command zone, haven't I? That's where my commander is. I telegraph it from the beginning. You idiot. So, anyway, cool. Rainbows are nice, though. Fuck you, Corliss. <laughs> uh, have you got any other art ones? Oh, Exsanguinate. Scott Fisher um, art, artworks. Very similar to Macabre Waltz, but without, you know, having flayed skin. No, oh, I like quite it. quite cute. I think the flavour text for it is really nice as well. Uh, we're talking about um, drip by drip, you know. Um, I, I have a little taste until I have to find a new dance partner. Yeah. Which is quite nice. They always make out like the vampires are like, oh, la 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 la, just happened to kill a person. Yeah. It's like, the person had a family, dude. Yeah. <laughs> like some little kid like looking through a window being like, that's Dad, my great granddad. Daddy never danced with me like that. <laughs> oh, it's gotten really dark. Okay. <laughs> Got to put a content warning to this one. Um, I have one more. Yep. And this was, before we started recording, I told you this might be the nerdiest thing. This is oh, ner- right, nerdier okay. than the coolest thing. Uh, Kadama's Reach. Yes. So, Kadama's Reach with the promo. Fucking phenomenal artwork. Yeah, way. great. Is by Ron Spencer. Yes, of course. Obviously, no, needs no introduction. This is the Kadama's Reach that I thought we were going to get in 
Neon Dynasty. Sure. So when they were going to do Neon Dynasty, it's the same thing like everyone thought we were going to get a Sensei's Running Top reprint with like neon stuff. Yeah. Which we then did get in the Master set of that year as a box topper. Was there a fancy Sensei's Running Top? There was, it, it, it was, it's a very plain looking top, but with like uh, neon glyphs on it. Okay. So this, oh yeah, yeah, I see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is obviously what they're doing now because this is the the uh, flavor text is from Satsuki, the Living Law. The tree, uh, the tree keeps our history better than digital than any digital device. So this is clearly. Do they use the word digital? They use the word digital. Yeah, but do they like? Is that a word that they now know? Because do they? So is it? Ele- oh. Well, Satsuki said it, so there we go. Yeah, but she's a living book. That's like the furthest you can get from being digital. Well, that's why she's saying that it's better than a digital device. Yeah, yeah, Keep yeah. Keep up, come on. I know, but I'm like... <laughs> now, that's know. not my nerdy thing. Okay, well, this that, is my that nerdy thing. me up the wrong way. The word digital on a magic card seems weird for some reason. I don't know why. I, I mean. see what you mean. Yeah. That's not my nerdy thing. Okay. The nerdy thing is, is that when I went back and I went, well, did they put Kadama's Reach in that set? Because it's Kadama, right? They didn't put it in the mainline set, but... They did put a copy of Kadama's Reach in the uh, Commander deck product for Neon Dynasty. They put that in with a new art, with the uh, Sam Burley art, where yeah. it's all a bunch of vines. But the this is where it gets really fucking niche. The flavor text on the Neon Dynasty Commander deck printing of Kadama's Reach is... The soul of Jukai reaches far beyond uh, the forest's edge. Shigeki, Jukai visionary, which is a bit of a meme in our play group, that fucking yeah. card. Wall of text. <laughs> but even though they, they've used the artwork from that printing in subsequent commander decks, all of them have the flavor text, except for the newest promo, of Dosan the Falling Leaf yeah, from the original yeah. printing. The land grows only where the can be will it. Isn't that fucking wild? Yeah, so, so they did have a Kami- a Neon Dynasty specific Kadama's Reach because the flavor text is from a character in that yeah, set and then re- in the product then and then reused, rolled it back. And then they reused the flavor text again, yeah. And the reason it wasn't in the main set is because they'd have had to put Arcanes in the set. That's interesting, yeah. Why would you roll back? Because uh, this is one of my flavor fails from the set as well. And, and we might have like time to do like an, an honorable mentions because uh, there's a few cards that I'm like, why the fuck... Of all the times when you're in a reprint set for a commander set, why wouldn't you give this card new flavor text? Or why wouldn't you give this card new artwork? Because there are a few of them that I'm like, why have you just used the same artwork and the same flavor text? What's the fucking point? I mean, yeah. I know you can't afford to do a reprint and um, change the artwork on every single card, but there are some that I'm like, this is the same artwork we've had. Like, you didn't get a new Tower Round artwork except for the sideway facing one, and that card's been printed quite literally about 15 times. <laughs> You know, so it's, it is frustrating, I think. But that is very interesting. Why would, yeah, why would you roll back a flavour text? Again, I think, like, who, what copywriter pissed someone off at Wizards mm. of the Coast? I also like that each one's a different Kadama, because obviously the initial Kadama would have been either east, north, south, or centre, the, the central one. Yeah. And then obviously we've got the west in, in um, Neon Dynasty. And I like that the new version is, you know, the, it portrays the new Kadama. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was, that's cool. Uh, new Regal Behemoth artwork where it's actually a dinosaur. Yes, um, though now looking at the main artwork, the, the artwork a little bit closer, I hadn't realised how like pretty it had like little things, little banners. And oh, stuff it's like an adorned lizard. Yeah, yeah, it's quite cute. Again, I, you don't you don't see it when you're. It's, it's, sometimes it's much nicer to have the like card image, card image gallery because you can zoom in a lot more. I like the fact that yeah, it's it's a triceratops, and I'm like, oh, uh, wasn't expecting that. You're not the lizard I was thinking you were. You are now absolutely the di- uh, dinosaur you always were. Mm. Um, right, are we done with variants. I think that's. I think I'm done with art. In general. Oh, really? Oh, why are we still going? Well, there's still some main set things I want to talk about. Okay. Just some little mentions. I don't have any more for, for art that, that jumped out at me. All right. Well, here's here's a couple of bits. Here's a couple of little flavor tidbits that I noticed that was fun. In the Sun Spear Shikari printing for the mainline set, uh, we get a Samuel Perrin artwork, uh, whereas the original was Alan Williams. And the Alan Williams uh, flavor text is, Left without their leader, Rak uh, Shah. Let me take that again. Left without their leader, Raksha, the Leonans split into two prides. One side supported the Regent car, while the other rebelled in fury. But on the most latest printing, which shows a fucking badass Shikari fighting a Phyrexian, it said, Raksha's sudden departure split the Leonans into two prides. The fight for survival reunited them. So I guess, like, mm. post-aftermath, like, the... Well, you can tell by the artwork, because they've got hex-plated weapons, yeah. which did, wasn't invented until uh, the Phyrexian invasion d- dignified it. So, similar to the new work for Kemba, she's yeah. also holding um, a um, hex-gold weapon, or yeah. hex-plate-gold weapon. Um, so, yeah, I guess it shows that 
you know, I guess uh, we must re- we must rebuild Tajna, not for Raksha, not for the Vanished Ones, but for those who still remain. Though it's funny that she about, talks about the Vanished Ones, because the Vanished Ones aren't referring to the ones that have died in the invasion. They're the ones that got blooped back um, after the Soul Traps got de- de-used, whatever they're called, uh, sure. de- decommissioned. Um, um, moving through just very quickly with some of these ones. Uh, Fact or Fiction with new uh, Anna Christian Sonart. Um has Slimefoot and Joyra with new flavour text that is a direct reference visually to the <coughs> uh, Therese Nilsson uh, original fact or fiction artwork mm-hmm. which had Hannah and uh, what's his nom? Squee. Squee, thank you. Yeah. Almost said slow bad. Too many goblins in my Which is interesting because Hannah and Joyra have kept captain together and um, Squee and Slimefoot are on a card together. Yeah. Kind of fun. Kind of neat. Uh, Personal Tutor, which also got a, a promo mm. uh, or a variant, has the variant has Urza and Mishra with uh, to Cassia. To Cassia. And then the main set version is Kazmina and a student. Lamelda. Yeah, which is kind of cool. Yeah, Lamelda's in the... Uh, the saddest in... looking owl in all of the world. Yeah. So a point on this, um, flavor-wise, it's quite nice. Obviously, we use the word tutor kind of to, to use for anything. You know, Gamble's a tutor. But we kind of forget that the initial kind of version of tutors were a, a wise old sage or teacher coming and giving you a tutoring. You know, they teach you something. Really? Because a lot of my tutors at uni were not that wise. Hey. Boom, boom, hey, hey, hoo, hoo, hey, hoo, hoo. Uh, how I've got a cold, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> but it's quite nice to see genuinely like the, that, that someone teaching someone something, whether it be Takassia instructor. The annoying thing as well is that the Takassia and Urza and Mishra, yes, we've just had the Brothers War, doesn't have flavour text. Prime mm. real estate, people, prime real estate. And also, it does. It's just nice to have a bit more of Cosmina because it makes her feel a bit more normal instead of like. Because there's always there has been over the last years, kind of like, is she evil? Is she some weird evil? Well, yeah, she's been on quite a few cards now, hasn't she? But, and then some of them just make her look like a normal, a normal teach. And then the other ones are like, she knows the second coming yeah. of Cthulhu. Yeah, she yeah, she's the harbinger she's of all time. evil. Yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah. fucking hell, what's going on? I she's prefer it that way. Stuff. Yeah, her, yeah. Her initial few Planeswalker cards, I was like, she is secretly going to be like, th- she might turn out to be God. Do you yeah. know what I mean? You know, yeah, it's, it's like the Elspeth effect, as it were. Like we get, oh, we're getting Elspeth with her. We'll find uh, out what happens with her in about fifteen years. When she turns out to be a Hydra or something. I don't Sick. fucking know. Can't wait to be playing Magic then buying 20 quid booster packs. Um, <laughs> moving on, we've got Endrick Sar, Master Breeder. Yes. One of my personal favourite cards. Very necessary my new artwork for this. I mean, Mark Tedding yeah. is the original artwork. Yeah, but I don't... Again, you see, I've seen it so much and I just feel like it doesn't do the card... I don't. It doesn't feel the, does the character justice enough. Whereas this makes him feel like a crazy breeder dude. Lucas Graciano, also with flavour text. Crazy of life, bringer of death. Pretty, pretty cool. Yep. Yeah, spooky, spooky enough. Very cool. Gives him a beard. Which is nice. <laughs> Still bald as fuck. So like consistency. Because this is the thing that I guess is a, a, a you know uh, age diversity and visual diversity. I mean, we, we complain that there's not enough old women presented in Magic. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> there isn't. Let's phrase that better. There's not enough uh, mature characters. <laughs> there's not enough old women. There isn't. I mean, we could do without more old women. Like there's even like even in a, even in the wides of our dream, we've seen that some of the artwork of the old crone is like, oh, actually, but I'm really pretty. Yeah, but that's a fairy tale. Yeah, so. I know, but. Mm, mm, Anyway, there's a thing. There's a thing. I, I I went on a Reddit dive on this, and then people started being like, "Well, there's oh Taser. Well, she still looks young." And then there's Arlen, who they keep seem to de-ageifying, and then well, Jai's dead now. It's like, well, women just aren't allowed to age in magic. I don't know where's that representation? Don't make Wizards. this political, sorry. mate. Oh, sorry, I'm sorry, one neck in. Keep politics out of my car game. <laughs> anyway, if you could, if for dear listener, if you couldn't tell what kind of an accent that was because you're not from the UK. I mean... That's an oik, mate. That's a right oh, geezer. Oh, yeah, mate. I'll you know? I'll come around and I'll sort your tiling out and then I'll also shag up your I wife. mean, nothing nothing against, you know, contractors. <laughs> yeah, true. True, we're not meaning to alienate any, any These two pasty group. South of England twats. Funny. Anyway, uh, Law Subordinate, for some reason, gets a new Kev Walker zombie artwork. Yeah, that's the um, why. the le- lieutenant ability, right? Of where if it's in play at the beginning of your yeah comp- same same flavor text though for yeah. some reason. Is it is it a vampire as well? I think? No, it's a zombie. It's a zombie, right? Yeah, all it's of Liliana. them. You yeah. had a bunch of uh, I think there were lots of different loyal ones. Um, is it a new artwork for Decree of Pain? I think it is, isn't it? And it's got the um, what's her name? Uh, Corona in the background, not Corona. <laughs> Yeah, it is a Corona, isn't it? Her name is Corona. I don't the God, it. the false God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm just going to double check this. To oh, I didn't spot it, but maybe. Okay. Uh, Sakiko, Mother of Summer, gets new artwork. And that's beautiful as well. Holy yep. shit. Deboobifies her a little bit, which is probably needed. Yeah. Oh, actually, it's actually her original. It's the original artwork. Again, back in a new border. That's why it looks weird. Oh, what, the Yeah, it looks better yeah. in the old border, I'm not going to lie. Sky, uh, Sky Shroud Claim gets a new not-90s artwork. 
Oh, true, 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 true. Well, game... I say that that's a bit unfair because it was two thousand that it was originally printed. So maybe I'll take that back. Uh, well, it was probably painted in the nineties. Stonehoof Chieftain. <laughs> uh, now we don't like to be negative on the Magic the Flavoring podcast, but oh, I hate both bit... of the Stonehoof yeah. Chieftain artworks. Why do they make him fatter and clunkier? Why does it? Why does he look like he's? He looks like a like a, a cow. He looks like a, like a cow bottom instead of a. I horse I bottom. really like Tomas Jedrzejczyk as well. Like. Mm. But I just don't like the Stonehenge Chieftain artwork. I don't think it reads very well. Yeah. And unfortunately, uh, the like Camille Allure one is a bit like... Yeah. I feel like centaurs an- anatomically... I feel like they do it well with the Selesnia. <laughs> but I feel like otherwise, I don't particularly like the Throsian ones particularly. I don't know. Just They feel bulky. I, feel like, I, I think know. Throsian uh, centaurs, like if we're looking at like their source material, a lot of Greek mythology creatures we've sort of condensed down in sort of um, pop culture over the years to be a lot more grokkable in terms of like oh it's a snake lady oh mm. it's a horseman or whatever the fuck it is but actually they are a lot more like um, sort of like chimera ish like like yeah. uh, otherwise I went... otherwise they'd be human horses right? yeah I went to uh, this was a few months ago now I went to a, a talk by a, a I can't you know I can't remember her name I'm so sorry um, but she's a comedy uh, comedian historian she was talking about Medusa and about actually how Medusa through all the different iterations in real world history she's like totally not a sexy snake lady no. She's a whole bunch of different stuff, but Again, also weirdly enough, unse- been sexualized yeah, through the nineties. Desexualized, yeah. yeah, yeah, and like, but also is actually quite a tragic figure. Anyway, I'm not going to get into the politics of it. Keep politics out of my podcast, mate. Um, but you know, it's just I wonder if that's what they're going for. Mm. Anyway, so I, I do now. I'm looking at it. It is a rhino, and he doesn't have like particularly humanoid face. He's got tusks and stuff. Okay, fair enough. I take that. It. It's, it's a better flex on what a centaur is. I still think he's a bit derpy. Bless him. Zalortha. We finally get a physical card with the actual oh, uh, Chase Stone Zalortha that. artwork. Yeah, that was originally only available on Arena, right? Yeah. Nice. No, I actually give us really... more cards from Arena, guys. Like, I really there love so many cool cards. Like there's a there's a there's a really good Tybalt card that's only available on Arena oh, that yeah, works. That's true. I think it works in regular Magic as well. I don't think it has any of those crazy search or concoct or or. I, don't, I, can't, I can't think of a word that's stupid enough. That isn't dumb in... arena mechanics. Well, yeah, but yeah. They, they obviously, yeah, they, the mechanics are stupid. The words they use are actually normal and sound as normal as normal magic. Well, normal to English speakers. Yeah, but you know, like, <laughs> I can't think of a word that sounds absurd on a magic card that uh... isn't less absurd than other cards that other words are already on magic. <laughs> Foretell, foretold, and things like that. Anyway, yeah, from, from, oh, don't get me started. Uh, I quite like the Godzilla King of the Monsters artwork by Antonio Jose uh, Manzando. That's the first time I've ever read their name out loud. Could you tell? Mm. Um, and actually, I completely missed because laser I don't play. Face, right? I, huh? Is he laser face? Yeah, he's well. No, he's the laser breath with the breath thing, yeah. helicopter in the background. Yeah. And the, I've got a physical card, and it's cool. Keep but I pops mix... out of my magic the gathering, room, mate. <laughs> but Chase Stone, <laughs> the Chase Stone artwork is pretty fucking badass. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And that's not all of them, but those are the ones that I picked out as being yeah. like interesting. Those are the ones like cause I, I'm going through. Yeah, there's a few now that I'm like, okay, fair enough, I hadn't, I hadn't, I hadn't seen. But yeah, that's, that kind of covers the bases on most of them. I'm sure there are some more flavor texts and stuff that have been updated as well that we haven't necessarily caught. Well, apparently there's a Loading Ready Run reference. As someone who watches Loading Ready Run, I've not been able to pick it up, and I've not been able to find it online, but someone told me there was, and now I feel really bad, but I can't find it. So we can obsess over it. Oh, Prismatic Lens is a really cool worm. Um, new artwork if it is in a new artwork I'm sorry Scott Murphy I didn't notice the first time you did a version of it is that not the promo we're not talking about the promos no this isn't the promos the regular just normal prismatic oh sorry lens man Don't it's just a name. normal prismatic lens man oh, don't blow me... it up decimate oh. someone else's decimate soaring it doesn't even do that it's not even that good Fantastic, good. Well, we're descending into non-sensory, so... Well, let's talk about some new cards! Yes. Uh, well, wait, oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, let's not talk about any new well, cards, no, no, flavour. Like, I don't have your screen in front of my face. I don't true, fucking true, know. True. Sorry, I didn't... I know, but we did, we did talk about the beginning, you know? Um, you, you, you do it then! Oh, okay, right, so, uh, anti-flavour. <laughs> demonic tutor, I've realised. Anti-flavour? Yeah, anti-flavour. Oh, if my you, God. If you have a demonic tutor, yes. surely it comes like... Every other demon that comes comes with big downsides, you know? Like, must sacrifice a creature or pay eight life, tap it, and yeah. slap your... Slap your sister you know like whatever the hell the, the oh, that's the are. downside i'm yeah. gonna give you what you want you have to slap your sister yeah. right okay but in demonic tutor i'll be one of the best tutors yes there's no downside you become the villain so what i like about it is instead of leaning into like this whole thing of like you've made a deal with the devil it's actually like it's almost like the devil on your shoulder going uh, like let me oh let me, go do this thing go go yeah. go get your combo yeah, what, was piece. The, what was the, what was the, the way it, j- it jibs them as well it's really really funny the flame text like what's that this is Nathan doing search noises, by the way. I usually cut this out. I might leave this in. Oh, God. Um, oh, that went a bit weird. Um, shit, I've lost it. There we go. 
Uh, great artwork as well by Donato Giancola. It is a good one. Yeah. Um, but is the knowledge really forbidden because it's dangerous to you? Or perhaps it, because it is dangerous to those who seek to control you? Says someone quite literally <laughs> controlling you. Go on, mate. Get your, get, your, get, get your great henge. Why isn't there an angelic tutor? They've missed such a fucking trick with that. Because uh, like angels don't do, shit, don't do shit for you; they help you do shit. I know, but I feel like after all these years and giving, you know, idyllic idyllic tutor should have been angelic tutor should have been only one and a white to go and get any enchantment. I think that's fair. I think I, I think idyllic tutor is arguably one of the worst ones. Mm-hmm. It's three mana it only gets an enchantment. Make it a two mana one. Call it angelic tutor, and then maybe all these years later, I wouldn't be complaining about it. I disagree. Of course you do. <laughs> Good. Uh, Kindred dominance um, shows oh, sure. a big ass dragon. Yeah. Today will be the end. Will, uh, today will end in a feast. Gloated the dragon, and what a feast it was! Um, being taken down by a bunch of slivers, which yeah. is pretty fucking terrifying. Yeah, pretty slivers terrifying. can just take down. <laughs> I mean, I know in the, in the in the idea of the card is that oh, I've named sliver and we destroy every card, every creature that isn't a sliver, and obviously they would have kindred dominance. Kindred dominance does sound like a very slim. My card. so my problem with the dominances, and this was my problem with them when they first came out in that twenty, what was it, twenty sixteen, mm-hmm. the one where all the eminence mechanics. Is that the problem with tribal matters cards or typal matters cards? Take your point, take your pick. Not here to discuss that. Is that you can't win because Kindred Dominance, for example, had a bunch of demons on the original artwork. Yeah. If you're not playing a demon deck, fuck you, I guess. But you can't not. You, there's no way to do it. Yeah, there's Let, no way to show spe- unless you're showing like. Yeah, there's no way to show one species dominating another one without having that species be the dominant part of the card. Yeah, but if you're not playing that particular species. I'm going to change it now. It's no longer typal or tribal. It's now species. What species are you playing? Yeah, I don't know if that works either. Only for like, creatures. Yeah, but what I species th- you play. I, I actually don't think that works. Like, what's Fine. the word? Grammatically, like, it doesn't. I no, I'm. I know. I'm being obtuse. Oh, you're being obtuse. I'm, being I'm, obtuse. Not, I'm not here to discuss. It. Um, yeah, true. <laughs> true. I'm back. I'm, I'm holding up my hands, and being like, I don't. I don't care. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> the, I think yeah, it's, it's, yeah. It's very fair. Like representation wise, like how do you put this in a deck that isn't a dragon or a sliver deck? And then if you're a dragon deck, you don't want to put it in because it shows the dragon getting pwned. Like there was a secret layer, wasn't there, where they did metallic mimic, where it was a goblin. Yeah, and it was like that's, that my... that's fucking sick yeah. in every goblin deck. <laughs> yeah, I've got, it, I've got it in my goblin yeah, deck. Yeah, and yeah. It wouldn't feel right in any other deck. But it's yeah, cool. It's but it's like, well, yeah, well, you can't use. Yeah, it it's very tr- yeah. I guess this is why they should uh, make most uh, typo cards shapeshifters so they can fit into any deck. <laughs> Uh, there we Thank go. You. Hoisted by your own petard. I did a whole. I even, I even tweeted out recently about how much I love the Lit Yarn cards, of which there is a brand new one. There is, um, yeah. Lit Yarn the title. Kaldheim. Uh, and it was even the basis for a deck idea I've had with uh, Catilda and Lier. But. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, because they want humans, don't they? You don't want there to be human humans. Well, it was more like I wanted to do like a folk horror deck. And, and it fits way better with Lit Yarn than it does with Yeah, like if I'm going to have changelings, I might as well have yeah. the folk horror changelings from Kaldheim. True. True, true. Do you know what I'm saying? I do not. You're saying I'm not I'm, I'm here for that you, fam. dumb. I feel you. I feel okay. you. Okay. Um, <laughs> the two different uh, new versions of Grave Pact. Um, I'm gonna go with the full art one first. Um, what is this? Sorry, what is this section that we're doing flavor. now? Oh, we're just doing flavor. flavor. We yeah, did we art. About art. Then we're doing then flavor. flavor, and then we're gonna look at new cards. Cool. All right. Then. I, I, I specified this at the beginning. Maybe we shouldn't have drank before we started. I've I've also had a very long day at work, and I've got true. a cold. Uh, I don't even the, know what time of year okay, it is. Okay, hush. Um, as the ritual neared its climax, the exultant cultists waited with bated breath, unaware of the looming consequences of the scroll's translation error. <laughs> now that's... I laugh. It's It made me lol. Like, that's such a good flavour text. It's a translation error. It's, it's just before he's about to do it, and everyone's like, ooh, ominous, and it's like... I'm imagining, like, confetti or something. Because, <laughs> I mean, obviously for cultists... They they want the demon to come, right? Mm-hmm. So what is the translation area? Is it just that they just keep stabbing the person and nothing happens? They look really, really foolish. Or, you know, they actually, actually spawn, I don't know, sunrise early. I don't know. I just think it's funny that you get all the way through this, this that you're modelling through the flavour text of something really serious. And right at the end, it's that they just, they got the A and the E the wrong way Oh, around. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's really cute. And then the other one is um, from Innistrad. Um, and it's about, uh, denied the peace of blessed sleep, guy slash out at the living. And the cycle of anger and unrest continues unbroken. I like that. I like that a lot. The idea that any 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 humans that are killed by spirits are doomed to be spirits that then get angry and vengeful and kill more humans. And yeah. It, yeah. I just like I like the fact that Innistrad just keeps having we keep finding new new ways that Innistrad is just the worst oh, place it's to awful. live. It's the awful. worst place to live. And in case you weren't worried about all of the normal shit going on, you still got Emeril up in your moon, mate. Maybe use the Omen Pass and maybe move out. Who knows? Like, why are any planeswalkers on Innistrad still on Innistrad? Yeah, fair. Um, Insurrection. Um, the cool thing about Insurrection is it's kind of like it just plays it off that um, I'm going to quickly get the flavour text it specifies a 
individual. We'll come here, insurrection. Insurrection. Why should our fates be decided by pompous decrees from an empty throne? Fight with me and seize the reins for your own destiny. Rizona, leader of the Azari Uprisers. I like the idea that as a magic, as a spell, because we've, we've said this about a few things, like words are, are powerful. You know, you've got Silver Quill, you've got Huatli, mm -hmm. you know, like words, obviously, like spells require two things, energy and, 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 and the language, right? And it's quite interesting to think that just standing at the front of a, of, of a, um, of a, of a crowd in MTG worlds, depending on what plane you're in, and just having a massive, like, rally can incite insurrection of great a bunch of, a load of a load of people not just in theory but actually you, you cause them a change in their mood just by having a really really good speech yeah i think that's really cool i think it's better than just saying hey they want to be on the winning side for once which yeah it was a cute little pun but also the herp derp of the of the, of the characters in the original insurrection arts a bit bad. well also a bit rude for the players playing the card for once <laughs> yeah yeah true a bit salty in it true um, and then my last one, and this is kind of really... Oh, no, no, I've got two. Two, two that are actually a bit more interesting than me just doing drive-bys. Kakarlaw. Now, we've been asking for... Kakarlaw? Kakarlaw. Oh, Kaikarlaw. Kakar! Oh, God. Not Kakarlaw. Kaka sound no, Kakarlaw sounds like a character. Kakarlaw. Uh, yeah, it's true. Uh, Kaikarlaw. Kaikarlaw. Law about Kaikar. Um, Il Corvec. Yes, indeed. Ka <laughs> so, in the Raging Gale, uh, the Raging Gale fans of Flames of Righteous Wrath, be fuck all to anyone from his from his original there. I, I, I'm assuming it's a he, but their original um art oh, um. Play, I think play, I can't play, play see, yeah. But we don't know where they're from. You know, they we never saw them in any plane. We can't, the hands being human hands and the egret face kind of really undermines us being on anywhere that we've actually been before. So it's really nice to get some new flavor text to kind of really help out flesh out his his character and understand where he's from. Obviously, he gets a profile shot with. Orange in the background, yeah. so we still don't understand what plane he's on. That's not helpful at all to <laughs> oh, anybody. That's why you don't like it. Mm. A life is meaningless until put to use. What mm. the fuck does that? Ref what? I mean, he, like, so he both, creates spirits. Both, yes, is a spirit life, or is a spirit death? Calcifer is a spirit. In, but are they a lot? I mean, are they alive? And also, also. It makes him seem really callous. A life is meaningless until he put you. He creates the life and then goes until I use you for something. But what part your of existence Kaikos... is pointless? Yeah, and it's annoying because that's exactly exactly how I play it. Yeah, exactly. In the deck, I don't use those spirits for attacking until that's I get to the end game. That's good card design. That's good flavor them for my new spells. I don't like the fact that it, it makes Kaikar as much of a douche as I am because all we see him now is basically going, "Hey, I, I have all of this. I, I create all of these lives, and then I use them for my own own vices." Or not vices, but my own devices. Yeah. Devices. Oh, look at this goblin bombardment. Shoot, 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 shoot. I don't play goblin bombardment, actually. What the fuck do you... I can't even remember. Uh, I it. use things like shared animosity and Jeskai ascendancy. Oh, yeah. And Kakar's crusade. Yeah. <laughs> I'm righteous. Yeah, you're, you're a prick. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So I just. I, I don't know of... why you... Met, what, just because he's in what Jeskai colours, you think he's cool? No, it's more just... I mean, I just like... I'd like him anyway. It's, 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 I think, one, it's a shame I didn't get a new artwork that I actually want to use. And two, I got more flavour, but the flavour makes him just as... Because, like, me, the first one was a bit wishy-washy. This is also a bit wishy-washy. Kind of a bit counterintuitive because spirits aren't really alive. And then also just kind of... They makes are the essence of life. They're essence of life, yeah. But, like, and whatever. I don't know. It doesn't... It rubbed the wrong way that you, you make spirits and then he talks about life. And then, but spirits on certain planes aren't aren't living. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I guess it's the conversation between a geist versus a cami, right? Because they're both spirits. Yeah, exactly. And it, what's but what's the diff? So ha if a spirit is the spirit of someone who's dead, what is the anyway? Okay. What's the diff between cami and geist? <laughs> That's and then my a standard last, routine. My last one is the full art of extra planar lens. Um, my main question, really childishly, is where be this? Who be this? So one of them is well, what the planes in the in the seers. Yeah, where, no, no, where, no. Where is the, the the plane that they're on yeah. that they can see all the other? Where where be this? Not even the plane. But well, who's well let's let's narrow it down. So yeah. they've got Capenna is in one of those things. So they've got Capenna, they've got um, Kaldheim, uh -huh. and they've got. It an unknown. It, does, it just looks like another Art Deco plane. Yeah, it did a bit. I thought actually it, look, it, it was... could be Rakdossy. It could be I don't know. Yeah. It's hard to sell. So it it's looks... not uh, not any of those. No, Strixhaven <sighs> doesn't look. It's too. It looks too mechanical. Like look, I mean, like it just. Esper. Doesn't... But then who who be this? Equilor could be Equilor. It could be. But who be this is the other question. Mm. Like who is this person? I don't know. Who cares? I mean, I I do. I'm asking the question. Stop let's just dismissive. let's just play the game. I'm oh, so sick of this law shit. Yeah, well, we, should we just cut the should we just, just cut the episode stuff. now? Should we just play some? Let's just cut. Let's just cut the. Let's should we just do like commander? Like what's the best commander cards? <laughs> <laughs> right. Cool. Great. And the thing that really annoys me is that we've li quite literally just finished a storyline <laughs> where we had a room 
that had extra planar lenses in it. Yeah, yeah. And it could have just been Norn Seed Core panom- Panopticon, wherever she converted it into, just her, her, like, her, CCTV her scrying room. Yeah, room yeah, 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 with yeah. Nissa doing the scrying thing. Yeah, yeah, good. That been. would have been so sick. Yeah. And instead it's just random dude in random mechanical building that makes no sense of either of these pipes. I don't know. It kind of annoys me when there's an opportunity to make to tie something back to law we already have instead of just expanding nebulously. Expand nebulous expansion is boring. <laughs> Specificity of planes we've already or story arcs we've already seen and expanding within those is interesting. To Do you me. know what? I fully agree with everything you've just said, but it's just so funny having we've ne- we haven't spoken about this card at all. So I'm coming in at it from a very objective viewpoint, and <laughs> you're getting so angry about I know, it. I know, I know. <laughs> you're getting so angry about it's it. What it and it's I agree what it represents. It's not even the card itself. It's what it represents. I Andy agree man. with you. It's what it represents. I agree with you. It's just very God funny. God damn it. And also, I just think it's also really funny that the the elephant motif continues. Avinir the petty is a card. The first, the first flavor text name that I've had in a long time that I really want to see on a card. Avenir the Petty. What are you going to do, Avenir the Petty? Anytime your opponent gains life, you gain life. Anytime your opponent loses life, you lose life. Like, you know, that kind of thing. Like, just yeah. anytime your opponent does something, you also do it. But maybe, like, a little bit worse? I don't know. I think that's quite a cute idea. Cool. That was all of my... Pre- that was all of my... Uh, that's, it, that's everything. That's all I got. Great. That's uh, that was a lot of opinions. I'm done. I know. I know. I like I didn't it. Even, I went into this not even being, like, uh, like looking over me and like, oh, I don't even think I have much well, to I say about this. I don't even know this. what this is about, yeah. I don't have much to say about this, and I've actually had a lot to say about it. Right, let's look at the new, new cards. New commander cards. Let's do it. So, so, nine new cards, four decks, 36 cards. Say that again. Nine new cards, four decks, 36 cards total, right? So there's nine new oh, cards. Oh, nine per, new cards in each deck. Per deck, four decks, 36 yes. cards total. Yes. I, saw the, I saw the number 36 and I was yeah. like, I don't think this motherfucker knows how to count. <laughs> <laughs> and there are some things that I think are much more interesting than others. <clears throat> Slivers. <clears throat> Pretty boring. <clears throat> it's fine. Well, one of them is actually very interesting. Well, yes. Actually. Well, considering... And the, I'm going to underline this really, really hard right now. Double underline, bold, italicize. Um, These aren't canon. Oh, well, that makes it fucking dumb. Pointless! It makes it pointless! Why make an interesting card and go, Why is it not canon? not really canon. Because they say it's not really Who canon. Who says it's not canon? Them, the fucking, whoever upstairs. The f- Why have I missed this? The, where would, where was, did I miss it was this? In, it was in the interview, and there was someone Oh, in the, the reveal question. video yeah, at Barcelona. They, were like, well, it's not re- they said it's not really canon. This is why, why we should, make the card this then? This is why we should have gone to Barcelona. Why make the card if it's not going to... Why, why make a non-canon magic card? Oh, what's the point of any of it then? It's so point- like, if it's not a secret lair, which, or you're not doing an IP... Or universes beyond, or something like that. Why not make the cards within your within your game? Well, so within your okay, game. So some of these work in and out of canon anyway. Like, planar, planar chaos is fine. This is what it could have been. There's a couple of these. But that... You can't do a card and then go actively. No, this doesn't actually really exist. There's though. a couple of these that absolutely would have needed some explanation if it was canon. So I guess that makes sense. But the whole point is then make something interesting and then make the explanation. Don't go. Oh, we can do something really nebulously interesting, but it's not actually. It's not real, so it doesn't matter. It requires no justification. So we've got the four face commanders. Yeah, okay, cool. Let's, 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 I'm going to calm down. No, no, I agree. I agree. I'm just, I'm oh, so I guess it. it's ten. Sorry, yeah, with the four face commanders and then the lieutenant, it's ten cards each per deck. We've already spoken about Commodore Guff. We go have. listen to our last episode with Tim Willoughby. Yeah. Pause right now. Go read that. Come back. Good. Well done. I'm going to cut How that cough you? out, but I'm going to tell you now, when I coughed, my zipper on my jeans undid a little bit more. That's quite cute. It went... <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> sliver Grave Mother. Just another five coloured sliver, isn't it? Yeah, and, like, is it interesting enough to be better? I mean, I think, so there are some sliver... Uh, okay. So, five-colour lords are pretty boring in general. I think that it's interesting that the lieutenant is probably the most interesting of the five of them, even though it's not an actual sliver. Um, and, yeah, I think having... Because what is that? It gives everything... It gives them all unearth, right? And the legend rule doesn't apply to slivers. So you can make loads and loads of copies of... of Slip sort of queen a hive or, or whatever, whatever. Yeah. yeah yeah okay because I think the most interesting one was the is I, I think actually the first sliver I think the cascade aspect of because that's what you want to feel you want to feel like slivers are just kind of getting out of control right sliver legion is just it gets plus one plus one for each other sliver and each sliver gets plus one plus one for each other sliver it makes mm. all the slivers big great sliver queen I just make sliver slivers cool that's also fine what's the what's the other five colour one there's four five colour ones if I remember correctly one moment Slivers are also just very boring to look at, I think. They are the original shapeshifter. Oh, that must be why I hate them. Yeah, the original changeling. It's just a bit... It's generic. It's, gener- it's Lord Lord Tribal. It's Tribal Tribal. Typal Typal. It's Typal Typal. And not in the interesting, hey, I've got a Dacon and an Orvar in this deck because they both do interesting things by making everything all types. It's that 
you play all of the things and they all do all the things together, but this one's probably the best one you want to get in this situation. And then this, like, I don't know. It's hard to make a sliver deck nuanced and interesting that isn't just gowisestrategy.com. But yeah. I mean, there's a lot of decks that I think fall into that, maybe being elves or goblins or even like, I don't know, tower rounds. You're turning your spells into go wide, you know? Like, it's hard to make things not feel. What's the other five color one? I'm coming because I, I got distracted. I, I thought we were cutting out the I'm looking it up space. Well, yeah, but I've still got to listen to it. True. Okay. I've still Colors. got to waste my life Colors. looking at you typing this through. Right. I've got to click. I've got to click all of the all of the things and then type sliver. <laughs> I'm watching your grandmother handpack at a keyboard. Up, okay. Hive Lord. Right there we go. That's so you... the one I said that one. Yeah. What does it do? It makes them all bigger. It makes them more indestructible. <laughs> Thank you. And then you got oh right. So Overlord's interesting because you gain control of any target sliver and you can search your library for any sliver. Sliver Legion just makes all of your slivers bigger, including itself. Sliver Hive Lord gives them all indestructible. I think probably the most, probably the most generically boring, but also sneakily very, very. It's powerful. the it's the best one. In the I think zone. the fast. I think the first sliver is very interesting because I like this idea of cascading of where you go. Hey, like there's an inexorable tide of slivers that are coming at you, and then Sliver Grave Mother has the most text out of all of them, and it gives them all. Oh, it gives them all encore. Mm. So you exit. So once it's dead, it comes back with. F- Fury, right, and it gives makes one for each of your opponents. And then yeah, you and then obviously the if the turn. legend rule doesn't apply, you can make a bunch of them. Yeah, so you could, you know, get a slip, you know, three sliver hive lord or three sliver legion. I mean, it's fine. I just don't think it's also interesting. They've gone back to they never did a five color sliver um, legend that was of the weird chandelier like variant, the humanoid, the humanoid ones. ones. And Grave Mother looks a little bit ethereal. There's a bit of crownage on her, and has just the one appendage. Hive Lord cheats by having all the appendages. Well, Hive Lord has four appendages, making it look a little bit more like a random alien. Sliver Legion cheats by having all of the appendages. Overlord is like three fused together. Sliver Queen is dank because it's Ron Spencer artwork. And then the first Sliver just looks really scriggly. Scriggly. I don't know, man. Anyway, we've got a lot of cards to talk about. Um, let's move on from Sliver Queen. Sliver. Uh, Zolodok, Zulodok, Void Gorger, which is the Eldrazi Pace card. It's a 7-4 Eldrazi. Colour spells you cast from uh, your hand have mana value 7 or greater. Have Cascade, Cascade. Cascade, Cascade is probably... Or Cascade is probably the most obnoxious word in all of Magic the Gathering. Yeah, someone who has a Master in the Wanderer deck, why do they just have to do it again for colourless? Mm-hmm. It's not exactly inspired, is it? A named Eldrazi outside of the Three Titans? So apparently the reason it's a named Eldrazi is because it was one of the first that got formed after Ulamog brood... Oh, Ulamog's brood started progenating or whatever the fuck the word is. Mm-hmm. Um, he, it was such a devastating... Um, individual that the the denizens of Zendikar named it specifically. I mean, I don't mind that. Yeah. So yeah. It, it, it itself, like you could argue that every single that there's no, that every single um, Eldrazi Titan or a big Eldrazi could be its own legend of its own right. But this is one that specifically got a legendary status based on the people around it. That's sick. Which makes sense. Anik Thea, Hand of Erebos. This card piqued mm. my interest mechanically as a new commander. I was going to pivot Sithis into it or Scythus. Now. I do want to dig into Anic Thea a little bit. Uh, legendary enchantment creature Demigod, which is important for my point. Uh, menace. Other enchantment creatures can have Menace. Uh, whenever Anic Thea enters the battlefield or attacks, exile up to one target non-aura enchantment card from your graveyard. Create a token that's a copy of that card, except it's 3-3 three, three black zombie creature and destroy other types for 4 Now, we've had lots and lots and lots of Theros cards across what is actually only four sets, right? It's two blocks, four sets, because you had the original Theros, and then you had Theros Beyond Death, death, right? So we've actually... but So for a fan-favorite plane, with only four sets, when you compare it to things like Ravnica and whatever else... like 10, 12... Yeah, exactly, or Zendikar, or, you know, many of the other Mm -hmm. big ones, because people do like Theros. Especially planes that have had returns to during the the three-block structure. Quite. Yeah. There's been a lot of Theros cards printed in... uh, ancillary product right there's been lots of like masters um command like you look at sith there's this Kestia as well Kestia, yeah. which was in a command the 2014 uh-huh. command product all that kind of stuff and it's an i just wanted to dig into this isn't a criticism or a comment it's just i think it's nice to note how they really built a space for the theros legends that are associated with gods to be really flexible because if you look at cards that are like say like some of the some just the standard set cards from the original theros block right yeah things like uh prophet crucifix agent of erebos all these kind of things which very much were associated with the gods that they were associated with in the colors they were the gods of and then they start to branch out with things like kestia is a really good example where kestia is a bant legendary but 
from the artwork, we don't know much lore about Kestia, but it's so clearly a nymph that's associated with both Afara and Karametra. Yeah. You have the water ewer, you've got the very sort of Karametri blonde hair that's kind of like a wheat sheaf. She's mm-hmm. very much about cultivating. The headdress is quite similar, if I remember, to being Karametri. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like oh, a... well, so that's, that's Scythus. Right, yeah, but that's also Karametri. Oh, okay. Well. Um, I think Kestia also No, 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 has no, that, no right? Kestia. I don't know if Kestia has it. Kestia's got like a band that's on the hair. But what I'm saying is, is like, it's very much a, a being that's oh, of right, both yeah, yeah. gods, right? And then you have things like Scythus, Harvest's Hand. So it's interesting that this is Anakthea, Hand of Erebos. So you've got Scythus, or Scythus, that's Harvest's Hand. That isn't a demigod, but is a legendary that's very clearly associated with Karametra, mm. in Karametra's colours. And we see now that you could have fitted it into the type. You could have well. put it into the type line. The demigod cycle, which was from Theros Beyond Death, which it was all the monocoloured demigods. So you had Daxos came back, Ad- Ad- Timoret, Timoret. And um, then the other ones. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Um, um, what? Oh, fuck yeah, well. I can't remember their names either. I've got them in my head. I can't quite get there. Um, but they were obviously the direct champions of the five head pantheon monocolor gods. Mm. But then if you look at things like uh, who's the planeswalker? My god, his name's just dropped out of my head. Calix, thank you. Is a direct creation and agent of Clothis, mm. the red green god, but yeah. he himself was Selesnia color. Yeah. For a set that's all about devotion to a specific colour, they don't really mind you flexing between two different walks no. of life. And I think that's very true to life if you, if you look at like the way that you know people with pantheon religions, uh, where it's like, uh, n- not monotheistic, polytheistic? Polytheistic. Thank yeah. you. Um, they don't just worship one god. They might have, like, or they, if they do, it's, it's seen as a bit more, like, sort of full on. Mm. You know, you might have different gods that you pray to for different things. And yeah. even the hand of a certain god on Theros has to acknowledge other ones. And it's just interesting the colours they pick. Mm. Because if you look at Kestia, again, this is why I think it's actually quite good backdoor design. Because Kestia, you can think, well, where's the blue coming from? What's Afara got to do with um, Karametra? And you think, well, Karametra's whole deal was that she was about agriculture, which did need the white and the green because you were formalising and socialising the nature nature of wilds, Mm. which was completely against what the mono green god was all about. But then you're adding in this aspect of, well, then you're who are you making that cultivation for? You're making it for the people in the polis, in the cities. Mm. So that's where Afara comes in, because she's Mm. god of the polis. Anakthea, as an Abzan commander, so white, black, green, you're looking at, obviously, Erebos, which is mono-black, Athreos, Athreos, and then Farika, which are all... I mean, it's interesting. So, they're all... And also Karametra, technically. Yes, but I suppose you you wouldn't say... It's it's black-centric. You wouldn't say crew-fix for... Well, no, because Erebos is black-centric, and then... then It goes to the other two, right? it's not the other two. So, I'd say it's a very cool design. The, the, I think it's it's an interesting thing because they're obviously Farika, Erebos, and Athreos are all sort of about life and death mechanics and like the ebbs and flows. Mm. But on the, uh, was it Banish All Hope? What's the Extinguish All Extinguish Hope. Hope, thank you. It's actually Athre, uh, it's, it's um, Farika, Erebos, and. It's fucking Mill Dude. Oh my god, why is his head dropped out of my fucking head again? Uh, fa 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 Fenax. Fenax, thank you. Fucking there are too many names. And not <laughs> Athreos. So it's, just, yeah. it's I think it's just kind of funny how in the card which explicitly states about mm. the ebbs and flows of death between the gods, it's actually not Athreos, it's Fenax. But you know, whatever, that's fine. Yeah, I guess I guess it's because Fenax was more tied to it anyway, right? The, I don't know. I mean, I guess... Well, Fenax well, himself was extin- a mortal. The, the idea of extinguishing all hope requires a bit more deception, which is why he yeah. was more involved with it. Where it's, he's, it's not Athreos carrying people into the afterlife. But was re- oh, this is why I love Theros. You can go on for ages. Fenax has a death mask, mm. a returned mask, because he was a mortal that ascended to godhood. Like, but it's just kind of not really known that that's what mm. happened. And that also kind of what he assumed. must have done it after he passed away. Yeah, and then Anakthea's got a returned mask on her hip as part of her armor. Uh, pauldron, actually, as well. It's on a. It's on a. Is it the pauldron? I believe so. Yeah, I've got it here. Oh, what am I thinking of? There's another character I'm thinking of. Doesn't matter. Um, but I just think it's cool. I just yeah. think it's a really nice design. So it's, it's Magali Villeneuve art, fucking yeah, well, exactly. It's interesting because I went in the other direction. You you talked about the other all the different other gods that might influence her devotion. I thought the other way of that. Now that obviously everything went to shit with the Frexian invasion, if we're counting this as being after that, did Erebos's domain extend? 
more. Yeah, potentially. Because there's a chance that he, if Athreus, for example, got killed, like that, or got banished, or stopped being believed in, or whatever, is there a chance that Erebos is, um, as I say, like his his charges and what he's in, uh, overseeing and stuff starts to be a bit more flexible? And to be a hand of Erebos requires you to have an understanding of life as well as death and the passage between, because she brings things back. Yeah, from the graveyard. So that Athreos aspect and this idea of life and death is very Golgari, very green black anyway. So I guess it's almost one of the things of you can be the devotee of the mono black god, but your the way you express it and the way that you express yourself from a flavor point of view requires you to have white and green tendencies and understandings as well. Also in ancient Greek myth, you do have demigod characters like Heracles mm. that don't just rely on their parent gods for help. Like very often in those stories, you get they other gods helping them out. Conspiring with others, or they even go back and end up undermining their initial charges anyway, right? Yeah, exactly. So I think it's kind of cool. Um, of the 36 other cards, are there any... Obviously, Narsi's another um, Therosian Abzan commander, which looks pretty cool, but... Is there any other cards that you think requires a bit of attention? I really like... Uh, oh, fuck, I fucked it. Oh, I've, I've scored too far. What a douche one moment. There we are. I think... Um, one, it's really interesting that we got a... We got essentially the beast that was kind of in Luca, uh, Lucas... Lucas Fell Beast. Liori. Oh, Smart yeah. Smart Touch Hunter. Yeah, they gave her a card. I actually gave her a card. You know, we'll, we'll skirt around the canon of exactly what Luca did to her or... <laughs> Whatever. Oh <laughs> god, <laughs> might not be alive. Um, well, no, I, well, no, it's not Luke who did it to her, is it? Well, it's no, he, he had, yeah, but he, he was. I swear that he was forced to ex- execute her, though. Was he not? No, I think General Kudro executed her. Okay, and he had but to it was Luke. It was Luca in the book that like kicked her to the curb. Yeah. Whereas in all the cards, it was like happy go fun kitten time. Yeah, yeah. Or whatever. Um, so that's really really cool. Um, I think um, sticking with the same uh, ten because we're looking. We've got Vronos, which is for those yeah. who don't know. Yeah, very cool. This is the character that you played during the Planeswalker game. Jewels where, of the Planeswalker, where you're basically fighting against Garruk. Because Garrick, when he was the planeswalking, hunting, you know, macho man, dashing around, it was Ronos as one of the ones that he it was like sent to investigate him, and then Garrick ended up chopping his head. He's off. A, he's an Innistradi, uh high inquisitor. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So then he went after him, and then he but the, the, the hunter became the hunted. Um, from a flavor point of view, because we got another Chandra, no one cares. It's Legacy of Fire. Oh, it's got all the people that she loves behind her. Oh, oh great! Fuck boing. off, Chandra! Get out, <laughs> um, Ronos. <laughs> <laughs> Get out! <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, so, it, because his, we don't actually have that much lore about him, um, it's quite interesting to see what his abilities are. The ability to get... I think he's more functional. He's put in the deck to tick the box of a name that we haven't had that you definitely wanted to have in, in, in your set. Yeah, yeah. Um, but then the abilities are very much, oh, what do we need the deck to do? You know, protecting a couple of your planeswalkers for each opponent returning up to one land on permanent, protecting your planeswalkers even more. I guess the idea is arresting. You're protecting and you're arresting. And then his ultimate is um, to, to make one of your artifacts into a 9-9 construct artifact. I think he had the ability to animate things. I'm not sure. I'd have to go back. This is the kind of card that makes me go, shit, yeah, I forgot that person was a person. Let me go and find out more about them to see Extreme if Extreme of Burmak artwork is fucking super. Yeah, it looks really, really cool. Um, and we got another Teo card mm. that's not terrible. Auto- yeah, or oh. digital only. Yeah, generate auto generates a blocker when he comes into play. Um, it makes you and an opponent draw a card as a plus one, and then as a minus two, you choose left or right. And you pa- you pramicon. You can only attack left, or you can only attack right. Yeah, very, very cool. cool, very necessary. <laughs> um, nothing else from that particular ten jumps out. Even though Guthrie writes history is a card, but it's essentially a mass chaos swap. Each player chooses something, and then they flip until, and they choose a card, and then they flip until they find something that's the same type, and they replace it with it. It's like a a group polymorph effect, which I think is as close to a Guthrie writes history card as I could think of. Yeah. Apart from maybe if Wheel of Fortune, if Wheel of Fortune wasn't a card, Guthrie writes history could be. Yeah, sure. You know, like discard your hand and get a new seven because that feels like you know you're rewriting what's about to happen instead of what's already happened. I don't know. Maybe there's a little flavor thing there that I'm, I'm not too too keen on. The most interesting out of all of them for me. Is Rakaramel, the biologist, the oh the, the sliver the tenant for the slivers for yeah. the sliver deck? From a mechanical point of view, it can do some wacky nonsense because uh, as it enters the battlefield, you choose a creature type. Slivers you control and non-token creatures you control are the chosen type in addition to their other creature types. The same is true for creature spells and uh, that you control. It's creature cards that you own that aren't on the battlefield. So the idea is that you can name, for example, Praetors and use the Great Invasion Tree to get every creature out of your deck into play, or say God and then use the World Tree to get every creature out of your deck quite cool. I like the idea that it's making the sliver thing a thing for other creature types. 
because it makes the thing that makes slivers individualistic more interesting because then you apply that to another creature type that has its own individualism because slivers can't have too much more individualism because the idea is that they're not individual. I don't know. I thought that's really, really cool. Um, and then speaking of a card that you will probably want to talk to, we got a new Titan. Oh, in, the lit yarn Titan. And in the colour yeah. the color that probably needed... Because I think in the t- at the time, the reason why Frost uh, Titan was so good was because it was really good against other Titans. Yeah. But nowadays, you look at Frost Titan, you go... Well, that's pretty shit compared to, you know, the ever printed Sun Titan or Grave Titan or Inferno Titan or the band in our format anyway, Primeval Titan. But those four are all pretty bloody good. Even Inferno Titan, which is slowly but surely being power crept, I still keep in my Maelstrom Wanderer deck because ET being doing three damage and then attacking for three damage is really strong with a 6 6, mm. you know. But Titan of Lityara, uh, four blue blue for a creature, Illusion. Not a giant Illusion, which is weird because it's a Titan. Yeah, it's definitely. It's, also, it looks like uh, a frost giant from yeah, Kaldheim. which makes no sense. And I'm just going to check now. But I'm pretty sure Grave Titan is just a giant as well, and it's not a zombie giant, which also makes no sense because it has zombies falling out of its fucking. Well, well. make zombies. It's not a zombie. Grave giant. Not Grave Giant. Grave Titan. <laughs> I can't even. <coughs> I can't even know what they are. Yeah, it's just a giant. So it's interesting that of all the titans, because it's not a true. It's an homage, right? It's yeah. not a true. Um, a, a, a true titan, as it were. Um, as, as, it, as it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. It's the chosen creature type in addition to its other types. When ETBs or attacks, the Titan text, as we shall call it, uh, which is why I don't ever think Worm Coil Engine ever qualified as being a colourless Titan because it didn't have an attack or ETB trigger. Oh, fair enough. Um, but when it attacks or enters the battlefield, you draw a card for each other creature you control that shares a type with it. If, if you do, discard a card. Now, this is going into my min deck yesterday. Because <laughs> holy fucking shit, it's good. Very good. Um, and then let's talk about Lazatep Sliver. Yeah, well, this is the one. This is the one that, as soon as you said they're not canon, I was yeah. like, well, who fucking cares then? Exactly. Because the idea is like, well, what if? What if there were slivers, slivers on Slivers were on Cat the entire time? Because we've only seen a tiny little bubble of, of Amon Cat. Yeah, well, who yeah, knows yeah. what's going on in the rest of the plane? You could have made it interesting by going, somehow, Slivers were there. Yeah. And then not only is the Hecma's fine and everything's kind of cool and even the Scorpion God, and not Scorpion God because they got killed, but the Scarab, uh, Scarab God and the Locust God, even they're like, hey, cool buddies, we killed the we killed the uh, Phyrexians together yeah. and they fucked off into the desert and then, oh shit, we found some Slivers. Or Nicobolus had like a fullback army of Slivers yeah, that he and went, and went, oh, played. Maybe even when maybe Slivers are too powerful, let me let me put them away on deep storage. And then yeah, they yeah, you know, yeah. There's so many cool things you could do if... It was, it was actually canon. canon. Yeah, yeah, and the yeah. fact it isn't is heartbreaking because you've taken a, a tribe that is kind of, for the most part, only going to get weaker in flavour from now on. Like, when we did our Sliver episode, or the episode we talked a lot about the Slivers, one of my biggest things was the Riptide Laboratory was a genu- genuinely, like, fearful place in, in, in my in my magic brain. Because every single flavour text that just spoke of how horrible the, the, the Slivers were and how dangerous they were, like, all it does is just build up this kind of ominous feeling of the Riptide Laboratory. And, and then after a while, you're like, yeah, it's just another sliver. Yeah, it gives everyone <laughs> that gives all the slivers flanking. Yeah, who gives yeah, a who shit? Who gives a shit anymore? Yeah, it's a shame that they had an opportunity to expand on that lore. But then again, are the slivers just like another old Drazi? Are they just another faceless well, horde, yeah, a little bit, you know, a little kind bit. of thing? Um, from any of the other decks, was there anything that you... Uh... Yeah, there's a couple of bits. Only a couple, though. So I really like the fact that we get another Anarchy card, Anarchy Oath Keeper. Which is another ogre spirit from Shadow. Yes, they're in not white. For, they're not forgetting the fact that they well, because I, I guess in them um, we don't know on that plane what how many tribes they had right of the Anarchy. That's true. And if they're artificers and they made the Chain Veil, they're probably red white anyway, because that's the only fucking colours that get. I would say that the, the the physiology of this particular ogre is a little bit more standard humanoid, whereas the Anarchy in other depictions are a bit more elongated. True. Yeah, it doesn't have the very long arm kind of no. feeling. But you know, whatever. We get a battle for the Hell Vault Saga, which is pretty cool. Uh, the first two modes are for each player exile up to one target non-saga permanent that mm. player controls until Battle of the Hell Vault leaves the battlefield. So this white saga, which is a bit of a weird one, is literally the Hell Vault because it's trapping things in until it goes away. Uh, and then, as in, like the the MacGuffin, the Hell Vault, not mm. necessarily the card, the Hell Vault. Uh, and then the third uh, mode is Crate Avacyn, a legendary eight eight white angel creature token with flying vision, indestructible. I argue, yes, make it a white black card. Make it cost eight mana, and on the final ability, you get both Avacyn and a Gristle Brand. Well, there you go. That would have been cool. That would have been really cool. Gristle Brand's banned in the format. Yeah, um, and yeah then... exactly. That's why I said make, give us a Gristle Brand token. And know? the last bit of flavour is actually only a flavour by formatting of the website that I'm looking at. Ugin's Master is a good thing. That's not the thing I'm talking about. Um, obtruse Archaic. Yes. Calamity of the Titans. Now, you're looking at a different website. I'm looking at Scryfall. Look at these two cards. 
side by side. It's funny, isn't it? So we've everyone always points out, this isn't new information, that the archaics of Strixhaven mm. just look like super friendly Eldrazi. Specifically of the Ulamog brood. But these two cards together... Side by side quite literally mimic each other's... They mimic picture. each other's movements. The the flavour text, this is where it gets really conspiracy theory. It's also the same on Mythic Spoiler. But oh, there we go. It's, so you have it there. M- most websites it seems to have Well, because it's, it's alphabetic, right? But oh, the... Yeah, by by colour. Because they're colours. <laughs> so, but Abtruse Archaics flavour text is... Unburdened from morality, archaics wander the vast lands. Vast lands, we get another name for a Strixhaven place, which is cool. Oh, or, this uh, is the first mention of the Arcavios, Vastlands. Arcavios. Probably, probably on a card, not necessarily, because they did a... Yeah, they did a... They, they used to do the articles, didn't they? The Plays yeah. guys. Oh, I miss those. Mm. Uh, unburdened from morality, Archaics wander the Vast Lands, seeking knowledge only they can comprehend. Calamity of the Titans, to the Zendikari, an apocalypse. To the Eldrazi, a day like any other. Now, does that not sound like... Are being unburdened with the morality of a situation. So the interesting thing about now we're putting both now we've got both conversations in the room at the same time about Eldrazi and Archaics. Archaics are prophet uh, are oracles, mm-hmm. but they get reborn at the beginning of time. Yes, and we know Eldrazi to be cyclical, must function outside of the typical cycling of land. Uh, yeah, of they're planes. in they're in the blind eternity's time. So who's not to say that? Once you get a certain amount of knowledge or something and you're reborn as an archaic, that isn't a representative of the same kind of energy that the Eldrazi are if they are um, blind eternities given form. Who's to say that the oracles gain so much knowledge that when they die, you know, if they were to fade off into something beyond into the blind eternities, the blind eternities kicks them back and go, no, 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 reform you into something that isn't necessarily dangerous. Yeah. And then we put you back on the plane again. I mean, that's that, that's 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 tin tin hoil. Tin, tin yeah, but I think I sure, think but... much like our um, multiple Narset theory, I think it's got legs. It has got legs. I don't think that multiple Narset thing's ever going to come up. I think it's too clever for the game now to be able to. Because <laughs> I do think now they've changed the format. That you don't get these big <laughs> sweep. Me. You don't get big sweeping arcs. You don't get three block structure. A lot of these cool slow drip developments are really hard to pull off when you're trying to rush from the next new cool thing. Because instead of doing the whole, let's give some justification that are being two narcissists, they go, let's do gunslinger cowboy world. And which one of those is going to sell more to the average person? Well, yeah. I mean, I don't, you yeah. know, I th- which I th- is a shame. Yeah. Um, speaking of the Eldrazi thing, you've got two. Rouse of the Eldrazi, another another card that's the name of a set. Ah, uh, very good. And all of the, the ability is just the three cast abilities of the Titans to destroy a permanent, to have target player draw f- um, four cards and take an extra turn, and it can't be countered. Nice. Quite cute. Nice succinct. Um, and then Flare of Loyalties is one of the few times we've seen in, um, an Emrakul brood, like, large Eldrazi. Yeah. We saw a few of them. We saw Spawn Sire, I think, which I think arguably even could be considered to be Ulamog based on their physiology. But I think there's very few representatives of Eldr- um, of Emrakul's brood. Because obviously on Innistrad... Well, she's the last one. That's on Innistrad, I mean. you had the... Um, oh, I've got um, Eternal Scourge is the only true Eldrazi. The rest of them are just transformative. And then you didn't get very many on Rise of Eldrazi because she got oomphed imme- pretty much immediately. Because obviously Nahiri Nav- Nav- went, oh, I'm going to steal you and put you in Innistrad. Good job that that storyline went somewhere. Right? Yeah. So yeah. So I think it's quite interesting because Flare of Loyalties looks fucking weird, man. And yeah. it's kind of maybe a good thing we didn't get too many. I think it's also really cute they found loads of different ways to put non... For those that really wanted there to be lots of new Eldrazi in your Eldrazi deck, I'm sorry, they didn't. And then they put all the Eldrazi you wanted in the Eldrazi deck actually in the main set, so you've still got to buy them. Sorry about that. <laughs> However, on the good note, we got a new Archaic. We got... A, they like doing colourless insects, have you noticed? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hypocrisite. There's a few others that I can't remember off the top of my head that I should have done better research for, but they've now got Skittering Cicada, which is also a colourless creature. I like the idea of the insects don't fall into any particular, any particular colour. And then we did... Um, Omarthis, which is the le- lieutenant, which is the Ghostfire initiate, initiate, which is on um, Tarkir around the tomb of the spirit dragon being Ugin, looking up for Ghostfire and Ghostfire and obviously. Cool is, that we've is, got is a, a uh, spirit naga, a naga that's in the Jeskai. I mean, colourless, so I ghost guess... Ghostfire, they're a Ghostfire initiative. But Ghostfire, even then, isn't necessarily tied to any particular clan, because it's not tied to any colour, It's right? tied to the just guy! Okay, sure, you can whine about it, like, if, that makes you, if that makes it work. Um, and then I only really have, like, one last, last one, I guess, now drift... Actually, that's two. That's a lie, I have two. Um, Cacophony Unleashed. Really cool. They're like, hey, let's make a Cacophony card. But instead of making a card that makes a token of it, so we can get an artwork of what Cacophony would look like, we're going to give you just its arm... And then that enchantment will turn into the into the creature. Yeah. So you get the claw of cacophony, and that's it. 
Yeah. Which is a shame. Just a bit of a shame. And on the other side, also a bit of a negative thing, <laughs> Gatewatch Beacon. Yeah, okay, it's all of the Gatewatch when they first had a little bit... I don't, I'm pretty sure I read a lot of the Zendikar story during that time. I remember being very disenfranchised with it. Um, and I don't remember this moment ever fucking happening, Andy, man. That's because it's not canon, apparently. Well, exactly. <laughs> so stop making cards that represent parts of the past story when they're not canon and they didn't exist. It's just like, just do something... Oh, I don't know. It's the it's very indicative of the nonchalance, as they were, to like committing with these decks to making them feel like expansions of the law. Like, let's make Slivers feel more in the law. Like, I don't... I, for example... I forgot the main point of why I wanted to bring up fucking uh, Raka Ramel, biologist, is that I don't know if this person actually existed. Were they one of the scientists in, in, in the Riptide Laboratory? I don't know. Probably not. And even if they were, they're not canonically. So, I don't know. It just feels it feels very unnecessary to give certain tribes, like the Eldrazi, or the Slivers, or even like Theros, like an expansion of their lore that then you turn around and go, isn't actually relevant and doesn't actually matter. And I feel like it's a little bit indicative of how they put these decks together, of going, hey, let's make these decks for the sake of it, instead of putting the effort in to make sure they're actually a proper representative of what the tribe wants to be. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, it's one thing doing sort of non-canon stuff in like an unset, which has a whole set symbol being like, hey, this is a joke, or this is something interesting that we're doing. And there's another to put it in like an ancillary sort of semi-canon set, and then to be like, these cards aren't canon. Bit weird. Yeah. But, I mean, saying that, they are like cool cards there are some cool effects in there i don't dislike them particularly it's just a shame when we're a law podcast and we enjoy flavor expansion that then they they do it and then take it back immediately yeah i think that's just a little bit unnecessary yeah I when, agree. We, when we don't necessarily especially for a set like commander masters where the most of the set is just reprints and giving new flavor to things that exist you give us new things that we have so instead of having so instead of giving new flavor to old things you give us new things and then say they don't matter and I think that's just a bit undermining. But hey ho. Yeah. But hey ho. Hey ho. You can pick and choose. There you are some new commander much. decks out there for you to, to, to indulge in. And Guff got a deck, and you know, I don't think any of them are particularly bad. I just think they're quite expensive. Yeah, they better not be bad for 85 you know? quid. It's almost like you really need that sliver hive in there because now, because of speculation, it's gone up 50% in fucking value. So now you're going to buy the deck and really need the card. I mean, there's there's definitely... This is a really big indication, I think, to me, of the under the underhanded qualities of, 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 of Wizards at the moment. The fact they didn't put any of the big titans in the Eldrazi deck and then they reprint them in the set to go, but that gives you a reason to open up more cards. It's yeah. like, no, that gives you a reason to spend more money. Yeah, we're not going to give you the money on face value to make you spend it, or in, in, especially if you're buying packs, not even guaranteed to get that card, you know. And then we're going to give you a weird fancy version to make you feel like it's even more worth investing into. Yeah, yeah. it's just the evolution of booster packs. It isn't is. It? This is where <coughs> proxies are probably a good thing because it allows you to play with all these cards without having to fucking invest your months. This episode has been weirdly hot button issue. It has, um, but I think there's a lot of hot button issues at the moment. I feel like. Wizards are in really, like, you know, Wizards of the Coast, Magic the Gathering is in a really interesting part, like, point right now, is that what they're doing is cool, but the ways that they're doing it are really uncool. And right. so it's really annoying because you get, you're like, yeah, I'm really annoyed, but also, oh, spoiler season, this cool new card that came out that I really like the look of. And then you realise, like, what it represents and the ways that they're doing it. Like, it was really, really cool to see them do Pride Across the Multiverse and then understand that they didn't release that product to any of the countries that would have a problem with representing, you know, gay, queer culture, whatever. Because they were like, oh, this is only for the countries that already accept it, not for the countries that, that don't. Yeah. It's, a, it's very conceited. And it's it's now becoming quite obviously conceited. And the annoying thing is, yeah, we're a flavour podcast. But even then, on three separate occasions, this podcast has managed to sneak back in the social, political kind of aspect of the game. You know, be it whether you can afford it or be it whether or not it's the game that wants to represent you. And, you know, there's lots of different aspects of it that they need to be careful with. That I just don't think that they are. And they're kind of getting away with it by just chucking more product out all the time and going, hey, we're doing Lord of the Rings this year. And for the most part, everyone's kind of forgotten and gone, to be fair, it was actually a pretty good set. Yeah. I don't think anyone that likes Lord of the Rings would look at the set and go, this is misrepresents. I mean, there's a few different cards. that. Tempted by the Ring was bullshit. Tempted by the Ring was bullshit mechanic. And there's a lot of cards that didn't represent their colours effectively. But maybe the the colour pie doesn't work when you move it into other IPs in general. Well, I I think everyone has a lot of very distinct ideas of what their Aragorn is. And that's the other thing. When you take a character that is perceived like Harry Potter, would you consider Harry Potter... Some people consider Harry Potter to be righteous. Some consider him to be a douchebag. Yeah, sure. And then how do you then put that onto a card that shows that full range of, of perceived expectation of the character? 
you know, and the source material itself, you know, there might not be something that is digested as much, like with Lord of the Rings. So those people that watch the films, not read the books, and then got very annoyed. So yeah, I mean, I'm glad we didn't do a full episode. Obviously, we've nestled it into this one. I think this is just a kind of a, a current trend of magic episode. Because this is the thing that's being sold right now, and the thing that's releasing that we're engaging with. And we're engaging with it in the way that we normally do, from a flavour point of view. And we still can't help getting wrapped up in the other little bits and things that are kind of circulating around it. So, what a fun time to be a Magic the Gathering enthusiast. I'm going to build a new uh, commander deck next week. <laughs> and I'm going to ignore all of this. <laughs> I like playing black white. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, and that's the thing, is it all just comes back to just have fun playing the game that you're playing. But I mean, yeah, it's interesting to see. I'm, I'm interested to see what happens over the next year because I think there's some cool sets coming out. You know, I think Eldraine's really, really going to be really cool. I think uh, Lost Caverns going to be really cool. I've got reasons to indulge in the Doctor Who decks. I actually quite enjoyed the Warhammer decks in isolation. You know, there's, you know. Yeah, there's... I'm excited. The, the reveal of some of the cards from sets that are yet to be revealed from uh, San Diego Comic Con. And then they did the Barcelona release of. I mean, I, I got Whiplash, literally using the word that I tweeted out because I'm basic and I can't think of any other words. Um, with them releasing cards for Doctor Who. Cans of Ixalan and Wilds well, of Eldraine. Wilds of All in the same really yeah. Like stop giving us everything at once, you know? Because I genuinely I got through the Doctor Who cards, I got through the Caverns cards, and then I kind of like tuned out and I was like I actually kind of tuned in to look at what was happening in the Worlds of Eldraine. I yeah. even forgot the thing, the next thing that's happening, because you were too busy throwing at me the other things that yeah. are happening later in the year past the thing that I'm actually yeah, tuning into take, do it at least in. even if you do it way ahead of time just do one thing at a time yeah because okay. I get they have to do like a product thing so for stores can know what to buy for and things like that but like it gets to a point of they where can do that within the industry they don't have to fucking do that on my platform. on a panel yeah exactly yeah yeah. so anyway. again this is an episode that kind of touches on a lot of like cultural issues but then also we tried to highlight a lot of the stuff that I think is quite cool I mean yeah it's again this is definitely obviously a cash grab set it's a reprint set of course it is the whole point is they're giving you more product to get the Copies of cards that used to be expensive that are now a tiny little bit cheaper, and all of it is is hey, is, this is another way for you for you to give us your your money, but at least we're giving you maybe the things that you want. Yeah, and I think there's a lot of things in here that are things that I want, so it balances out a little bit. Where that scale kind of can swing between before you know it gets pushed too far, I guess we'll find out over the next you know twelve to sixteen, eighteen months or whatever. No one says twelve to sixteen months, twelve to fifteen and a half months. What else of the magic? Um, I am at a point now where I'm doing all the weird little side quests in Tears of the Kingdom I've done all of the shrines I haven't completed the depths yet I'm still missing a bunch of armour and I understand that without the duplication glitch it's going to be a dick to upgrade all of them so yay yeah I'm I'm taking it nice and easy in Tears what of the Kingdom what a fucking game though yeah it's good I'm, I'm just taking it nice and slow yeah big fan it's one of those things I can just time in and out whenever I need to yeah and I've also got the lady doing um, Breath of the Wild hasn't quite finished the Great Plateau yet. It's that moment. So, so she, it's amazing because I didn't really register this moment and I can't remember this moment because it was like six, seven years ago of when you run out from the Shrine of Resurrection and it says the cut scene. Yeah. And it goes... Duh, 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 duh. And as, as this happened, her face was like, oh, this is so beautiful. I was like, oh, I got to relive the moment again. Well, like, I mean, the, the Tears of the Kingdom has exactly the same one it does, when you when first jump out. off. Yeah, yeah, you jump off and you're like, Holy, and it's when you splash and then all the, the water splashes around, around you. I was like, I'm already in love with this game. I've only been playing yeah. it for 20 minutes. Uh, I'm learning chess. That's impressive. I saw. I mean, it's funny because one of our uh, one of our um, fellow magic players in our little group is um, a friend. You can say friend. Yeah, but I like to give more relevance. Talking to about Dave, yeah, Dave, yeah, yeah, he's a mate. Dave Bland. <laughs> he's not bland. He's actually quite. El Blandy on all yeah. socials. He's very. He's a very good, uh, very good chess player. And then we're now a little retreat week where we needed to find something to do between the games of magic because there's only so much magic you can play before getting completely over it. Yeah, there's a bit of chess. From what I can tell, pretty good at it. Yeah, he seems to think I was alright at it. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm, I'm on chess.com, build up my ELO number. Oh, and that's a nice uh, inspired name. It's, it is literally the best place to do it. Chess.com forward just, slash check yeah. forward slash checkmate. It's just chess.com. Fuck okay. it. <laughs> Learning my London openings. I know what a fork is. I know what a pin is. I know... Is it, This is exactly what other people hear when we start talking about like trample and haste and stuff. And they go, yep, nodding, smiling. Yeah. These are trash strategies, right? Uh, I hate it. Fork is when you yeah. go, you try, fun- you get, you attack on multiple. F- a fork is yeah, you can get like two for one. What's a pin then? A, a pin is, is like a lion. You got the head. Of the t- so so, so, so if you've you got to? if you've got your king, yeah, and uh, they're blocking the king from say your bishop with a knight, 
you pinned that knight to oh, the right. king. Oh, right. So, right. It's not a pin formation. It isn't a pinning as a knight. Yeah, you, when you lock you something locked in place. You've locked it in place. Yeah, otherwise, okay, they check fine. themselves. Sure. Okay, cool. That's cute. Yeah. Nice. It's cool. Cool. That's good to diversify your gaming. No wonder I haven't played with you in a little while. Don't have to spend so, any money on chess. Single tier rolls down cheek. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In other news, I've I've, I've spent you know or not in other news in in specific news I've ended up spending on you know I, I feel like there's flux right with magic. There are sometimes we just spend on a load of random commons because you want to like build up a random deck and then there are times you go this deck finally needs an ancient brass dragon and there's no point not like eventually it's not gonna get it's not gonna ever get reprinted to be cheaper I might as well get it now I didn't mean brass I meant copper because that's the expensive one so I got one of those now and that did cost money so who's really winning here not me. I'll draw it, I'm going to draw it once in the next year. Wizards of the Coast. Oh, fuck, you're true. Yeah, fuck. Actually, in other news, something I've been listening to a lot, actually, um, is card markets, um, videos, uh, YouTube videos, YouTube shorts with uh, Torolf, I think is one of the names. I know that's also one of the giant, uh, one of the gods from um, Kaldheim. Yes. I genuinely think that's one of the one of their names. Uh, yeah, they're yeah, really, it's really the, fun. It's the they're good. Yeah, no, it's, they're really, a really good, really good group. They do... Random like tidbits about cards, mag- magic's past. I think they recently did a modern uh, gauntlet of where they played every deck that ever won against each other to see who came out tops. Um, they're quite good content. Go and see that. It's nice and fresh. It's not your typical normal commander circles that are starting to get a little bit dry and repetitive. Not to name anyone in particular. See how I didn't name anyone in particular? Hit us up on Twitter at MT Flavoring <laughs> uh, with your thoughts on Commander Masters and indeed anything else going on in Magic. Please be nice, not an arsehole like Nathan and I. Um, <laughs> you can find our emails at uh, mtflavoring at gmail.com. My personal Twitter is at Face. Nathan's yours is. At the Fox. I've been wanting to cough, and I have done several times by wanting to cough recently for the past 10 minutes. So I'm going to wrap this up by saying thank you so much for listening. This has been. Magic the flavouring. We'll see you relatively soon. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs>